अच्छा है वही बोल रहा अच्छा है यार देव कलर से इसे यहाँ पे मेरा है इधर आया देखो मिस्टर बोल से नहीं for the NAAC workshop. It is an honor to have such distinguished educators and scholars in our midst. This conference marks an important occasion where we come together to discuss and deliberate on the crucial aspects of quality education and institutional accreditation. The NAC plays a vital role in assessing and accrediting our institutions, ensuring that we meet the highest standards of excellence. Now, to begin this occasion, May I invite the audience to involve the Almighty. I request Janab Hafiz Muhammad Samir Hussain Sahab to recite the Qur'an. Dr. Saher Ansari sir, Professor in Naturally of Physiology, to please escort Professor Ali Raza Mosley sir onto the Vice Chancellor onto the stage and also Professor S. Ashwa Kenwell sir, former director IQAC Coeppery University onto the stage. I request Dr. Bilal sir from the Department of Microbiology to please escort Professor Ruksha Ma'am, Registrar and Deputy Controller of Examination KBN University and Dr. Basisa, Director, IQAC Kagan University, onto the stage. Thank you, sir. Approaches to teaching and learning and gain valuable insights from the experts in the field. With this, I would like to invite Dr. Basir, sir, Director, Internal Quality 
an assurance cell, Kevin University, to present the welcome speech and give introduction to the esteemed guests. Thank you, Irfan. Respect and dignity on the guys. Honorable Vice Chancellor, sir. Ashfaq, sir. Registrar, ma'am. A very good morning to one and all present here. I am Dr. Muhammad Abdul Basir, Director of NVC, take the very opportunity to extend to you all a very warm welcome for today's event that is Pinfriendly Workshop Online on behalf of all the NVC members. Firstly, I am honored to welcome our first resource person for today's workshop, Dr. Sayyid Ashwa Khamad sir. Sir is Professor of Applied Geology from Coenco University, Shimu Ganesi. He has pursued his MSc and PhD from Bangalore University. He has completed 25 years of teaching and research experience at Coenco University and also guided 11 PhD and 2 MPhil students. Sir has published approximately more than 50 research papers. He was deputed to Central University of Karnataka, Kalburgi from 2012 to 2015, where he served as Dean of Schools of Earth Sciences, Physical Sciences, Computer Science and Dean of Students Welfare. Sir was also a member of Executive Council and Academic Council at Central University from 2012 and 15. Sir also served as Director of Planning, Monitoring and Evaluation Board of Kuwait University. And lastly, Sir was also the Director of IQAC from Coenco University for the period of two years from 2018 to 2019. These are just few of his achievements. Thank you, Sir, for accepting our invitation. I request everybody to please give a round of applause to you, sir. Coming to second resource person, Romit John, Sir. He will be joining us at 1 o'clock because he traveled last night from Bangalore, so he will be directly coming for his session. And it will be my pleasure to welcome him to introduce him again at the time when he will come. So, coming to the chief guest, it is my immense pleasure to welcome the backbone of our university, Professor Ali Raza Musri, sir, Honorable Vice Chancellor, sir, KVN University, without whose constant support and encouragement, this event would not have been possible. Sir, sir is the young and dynamic person who is driven by the passion to succeed in the aim of making the Khaja Bandar Nawaz University a name among one of the best academic institutions in the country as well as abroad. Sir, he is alumni of Alumni University, Hyderabad, alumni of Usmania University, Hyderabad, and was awarded his PhD from the Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi. Sir has 14 research publications to his credit, 4 edited books and 2 books are authored by him. He has academic and administrative experience of 2 decades which spread over 3 universities. He has served as controller of examiner and as registrar at Central University of Karnataka and as the registrar and pro vice chancellor at the English and Foreign Language University Hyderabad. Apart from this position, Sir has also served as member of many UGCs and MHRD committees and as a member of Academic Council and Executive Council of Central University. We extend our warm welcome. Thank you for coming, Sir, and making this function. Thank you. It's my great pleasure to welcome the pillar stone of the university, always available and approachable, Dr. Uksar Patil. Ma'am is Registrar of Kevin University, also the Deputy Governor of Examiner. She has academic and administrative experience of 19 years. She has been discharging her duties in different capacities as Vice Principal, KVN College of Engineering, Director in Research and Development Cell, KVN College of Engineering, and in Faculty of Engineering and Technology. And she or Ma'am is currently serving as Deputy Governor of Examiner for KVN University. We all are aware of it. She was awarded as PhD from Jawaharlal Nehru Technology University, Hyderabad, in Computer Science and Engineering in 2016. A warm welcome, ma'am. I once again welcome all, each and everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now we would like to request Professor Nishat Ari Hussain Dean, 
Faculty of Sciences, Humanities, Social Sciences, Commerce and Management to felicitate Professor Ali Raza Mosley, Sir, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Kevin University. Siddhay Silver Sir, Dean, Faculty of Medical Sciences, to felicitate Professor Rukhsara Fatima Madan, Registrar and Deputy Controller of Examinations, KBN University. Thank you, sir. I request Dr. Siddhan Shanti, sir, Medical Superintendent, KPN Teaching and General Hospital, to felicitate Professor S. Ashwak Ahmed, sir, Professor, Department of Applied Geology, and former Director, IQAC, Kuwait University. Now I request Dr. Bilal Ahmad Mir, sir, Professor and in charge, head of the Department of Microbiology, to felicitate Dr. Mohammad Abdul Basir, sir, Director, IQAC KPN University. Thank you, sir. Now, I would like to request Professor S. Ashwa Kenman, sir, Professor, Department of Applied Geology and former Director, IQAC, Kuwait University, to address the gathering. A big round of applause. Sir. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning to all of you. Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Ali Raza Mosby. Rakshan Medan, Bashir, and uh, our learned audiences. So it gives me immense pleasure to be associated with you on this auspicious occasion. And uh, I would like to thank uh, the organizers of this function, especially Professor Ali Raza Mosque, for uh, giving me this opportunity. And uh, I will not take much time because I will be speaking uh, for almost one and a half hours about uh, the preparations for NAC. But uh, however, uh, what uh, the NAC requires and what does the university requires, that is what we are going to speak in my lecture uh, after a uh, few minutes. And uh, what I would like to stress upon here is the universities and colleges have been made accountable now. Accountable means we have to you know, accountable for everything, starting from uh, the students, the university, including the teaching and non-teaching faculties, whoever working in the system. And uh, now, most of the agencies, you know, Government of India has several agencies for the accreditation processes. NAC is one among them. Apart from NAC, we have another agency which does the same type of uh, work, like NIRF, and uh, there are lots of benefits, you know, once if we get good grades. You know, we, have, we will get lots of benefits. Those things I will be talking to you. And uh, also, you know, we have to be accountable ourselves. All teachers, students, faculties, everybody should be accountable. And uh, if we are good, our university will be good. If our university is good, we will be recognized everywhere. So our recognition solely now in the present situation depends on our grades, ranking. If we are in good ranking, we will be recognized everywhere. Our students will be recognized everywhere. And also if we get good grades. Now, you know this Manipal Academy, you know all of you I think know Manipal Academy, it is in Bangalore. They have advertised for teaching faculty. You know, one of the condition what they have put forth is the university, the students who apply, they should come from the universities with A grade by NAC or 
top 100 graduating students by NIR. You can imagine if your grades are not within 100 or not A grade, none of your students can apply for prestigious universities. So you know the situation, you know the gravity of the situation, that is why you know the grading has become very important. And now every one of us will follow in future your own university in future while advertising for the faculty and other positions, they may also ask, you know, the ranking with A grade or like ranking within 100 by NIRS. So we are, you know, we have to concentrate and we have to work to get this ranking. That is why they have organized this seminar. I hope I will satisfy everybody, you know, in my presentation. And uh, moreover, you know, instead of sharing my presentation, I, you know, I uh, welcome the interaction. If you ask questions, I can answer you and I can also share my experience. You know, experiences, you know, if we share, it will create a lot of impact rather than our just presentation, whatever we have. We make colorful presentation. None of us, even myself, will not you know, know many things in the presentation, what myself I have prepared. So, whatever experience, you know, 20 years, every NAC, you know, has got different cycles. Cycle 1, 2, 3, 4, like that. You know, first cycle, what is the grade? Second cycle, what is the grade? Every five years, they visit NIRF. Every, every year, they have this ranking system. So, if you are continuously have within 100 ranking in NIRF, you can imagine their advantages are too many. Our university, you know, I am from Kuwaiti University, our ranking was more than 200 at that time. And uh, we have implemented some stringent measures. I am going to share all those measures, what we have done. And uh, we could able to achieve the ranking within 100 for past five years. So our ranking is around 70 and 80s because many institutions are coming up. But our ranking system, we are maintaining the ranking below 100. So once if we achieve this, you know, we get lots of benefits from the government. Not only the central government, even from state government, UGC, they give funding to our universities and also we get lots of benefits from the state government. You can start different online and open learning courses as you wish. Because earlier we used to take permission from the UGC and other agencies to start any type of courses. But if you have A grade, and also within 100 ranking, you can start any type of courses. That is the advantage you have. And also position, you know, our aim is our students, right? Every college, every university, you know, we have to have, we have to concentrate on the students. So if our students are in very good positions, very good placements, in very good, uh, you know, agencies, in very good industries, you can imagine how our, uh, you know, uh, the, a development of our university because most of the students you know they carry forward good words from one another you know like you know once if our student join in very good industry many people come to know that you know oh, this student is from this university so he will be like a brand ambassador to our university so therefore our aim also should be for producing the best students and with that comes the teaching best teaching you know, best practices what we follow and uh, that is the overall development of the university. That is what I am going to concentrate in my lecture. And uh, without taking much time, I would uh, thank once again the audiences and also our uh, organizers for this occasion for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, Arada. Thank you. I would like to request Professor Ali Raza Musri, sir, Honorable Vice Chancellor of Peking University, to please address the audience.
as far as your professional life is concerned. Now, some exciting and new things are happening and I request everyone to be part of this. Uh, Professor Ashpar uh, John, I mean, he will be here by afternoon. He will be Professor Guru Varshi, he will be uh, IPSC Director, Professor Guru Sir, the Director in charge, Deans, heads of the departments, and my dear colleagues in the faculty. When I came to think of it, this university was established five years ago. But the components of this university, the medical college, the engineering college, the hospital, these are the three main uh, parts of the university. When I found out the engineering college is 45 years old, this is the 45th year of the engineering college. It is the 35th year of the hospital and the 25th or the 23rd year of the medical college. So we are not a new institution. We have decades of institutional history. Then where has it gone? Why do we not see it like when we start this process of Mac and all? Why are we starting on scratch? And I often, I have asked the Honorable Chancellor that when these three institutions existed, they were offering programs from the UG to the PG level. Then why did we need a university? Higher education was anyway being offered. You did not need a university to offer higher education. And five years ago, when all of you one fine day became part of a university, I don't know if you asked yourself that what will change now. I mean, your workplace is the same. Your work is the same then what will change now? This is what I want to speak to you today. I take about six or eight minutes, but I would like to very clearly impress upon you that what is going to change now. Now I must thank the Honorable Chancellor and the Co-Chancellor who have given me some opportunity to bring about some major changes. But many more will happen. But now they will happen in a structured way. I have addressed two or three very important things as far as this university was concerned. But now, beginning today, we will have a series of structured, time-bound changes. When I asked you, and as I asked myself, that why did we establish a university when there were already colleges offering higher education? I think part of the answer lies in the fact that the potential that the university offers for academic and professional growth does not exist in a college. That's the first point. Secondly, these institutions have grown in a specific social context. But we cannot remain unchanging in a changing world. Our institutions have been designed or fashioned to cater to an India that was in the 70s and the 80s and the 90s. These institutions in their current form cannot take up the challenges of the 21st century. There is no way. It is the work of this university to handhold these institutions so that they enter the modern area of 2022, 20, 23, 24. While we, while we may like to live in the past, but the past will become history only if you can learn from it. Otherwise, it will remain a past, a glorious past, a fading past, a past that we have lost, but a past that does not inform our future. If you want to make past into history, then you will have to learn from the past. You will have to learn from the mistakes. You will have to learn not to repeat the same mistakes. Now these are very complex things. These are things which will strike you at the personal level. Most of you have spent 30 years, 40 years, you have given your life to the institution. Would it not be nice if that all the time you gave really gave you back something more apart from your salary? Should it not give you respect, uh, recognition, 
national and international acceptability. Should we not aspire for bigger things? Or should we remain where we are? This is the first question I'll ask each and every one of you. Don't answer me now. Think over it. I have been to the place where Professor Ashfaq University is, Shimoda. It is in a forest. It's in the middle of nowhere. But once you enter that campus, you don't feel that you are in a rural area. It is an island of excellence. We are banned in the middle of the town. We are not far away in some forest. We are not far away from the highway. We are not like in some rural area or far off area. We are right in the middle of the town. And what are we doing with ourselves? I would like your mind to question yourselves about some of these thoughts. Now, I know that when I joined about a year ago, there was a long list of work I had to do. I have addressed to three or four parts. I know that we have challenges of physical infrastructure. Yes, it would be wrong on my part to say that you should only work. Right from furniture to computers to the access to the library, we had problems in salary, payments were late, Today it will be done, not because, because we, as you know that we had a big change in the entire salary structure. Now we are being paid on par with any other university in the country. I think you should, Professor uh, Ashfaq should know it that I think we are perhaps the only private university in the state which has fully adopted and implemented the seven pay condition, except the allowances. Now this news will spread. This news will attract talent. I know that. But we will not be able to retain talent unless we make them belong here. I today from here I promise all of you that within two months from today, the entire Furniture, computers, silver, everything. This campus will change. I told this to you earlier, but I met all the heads. There were a lot of excuses, and I said, I promise you, I will remove every excuse in your book. And I will do it. After that, what will you say? You will have no option except to do your work. It is easy for me to bring down your list. I'll do it step by step by step. I've taken a few steps. I'll make sure I take the remaining steps. But when I come to NAC, I have three observations to make. NAC is about quality. Now we have got an internal quality assurance cell, IQAC. Now this is going to be a very important cell of the university. It will guide us on what are the quality issues which we need to address, what are the parameters which we need to adhere to. But there will be three important changes which you have to be part of. The first is to bring in a professional culture to the university. We need to be more professional in the way we behave and the way we relate to our workplace. The second, the administrative structure has to become more responsive. And thirdly, and most importantly, we will have to imbibe a culture of excellence, standard operating protocols for everything that we do. I know that change is a very complex thing. Nobody likes change. I would not like to change. I mean, I will ask you to change, but if you ask me to change one habit, I will not like it. I know that. But change is complex, but it need not be harsh. You will have to own change. You will have to begin change. This workshop is first in a series where again and again the experts will be asking you, change the way you think. I know, if you are going trying to change organizational behavior, that's an entirely new topic, but we are going to enter in. 
in that field very soon. 23, 25 years of the medical college, 23, 25 NMC inspections. Quality cannot be achieved in an inspection mode. These inspections are nothing compared to what we are going to do now. The work of an inspector is to find fault. The work of an inspector is to instill fear. Unfortunate, but that's the way medical education is run in this country. Let's leave that aside. We are not here to talk about that. What we are going to do is that we are going to replace that fear. We are going to replace that reluctance by inviting all of you because NAC is invited. They will not come one day morning. We will know one month ago that so and so date is the NAC visit. It's called a peer team. They are the peers. They will come and not do false finding alone. They will also say that this is the way you are doing things, this is the way you can do it in a much different and a different way. There are two themes which we will touch upon today. The first is by Professor Ashfaq who will tell us how do we collect, collate and maintain information objectively. This is the first step. When I had that, uh, the, the online form sent to all of you and thank you, almost everyone has given me a reply and I will share the, the results with you very soon. I know how many males are there, females are there, how many are actually publishing, what is your uh, weekly workload. Now I know a lot more about you than you know about me. But I know a lot more about all of you now. Why am I collecting all this? Because I am trying to build, I am trying to understand what am I dealing with here. What is the faculty profile? I know now that we have 210 members of the faculty and we have got nearly 500 members of the non-teaching staff. We have got loads more of non-teaching staff than what we require. Even as per any ratio, we are overstaffed. This is the first thing which strikes me. Secondly, I find that maximum people are either extant professors or at the top level of being a professor. The entire band of associate professor is not there listening. This tells me there has to be a large scale promotions. These are the steps which we will take so, so that the academic structure is maintained. Uh, as I was saying, Professor Ashfaq will tell you how do we create data information, how we manage it and how we use it. It will be more like a personal diary which you maintain which helps you to improve yourself because this data will show us where we are going wrong, what needs to be done and what is our next step. The other speaker who is not here yet, he will be here in the afternoon and speak about him later, will show us how to improve our research profile because we have got a very very poor, non-existent research profile. Let me end with these words and uh, I mean, you know our guests, but I would also like to take a few minutes to tell our external uh, experts here today that uh, there are three things about all of you which I know. First, you have a very strong sense of social involvement. It's rare, but you don't find it as rare. Secondly, you have stuck with this institution through thick and thin. You chose to stay here. You chose to work here. It shows a high level of institutional commitment. Next time. Sure that this will also professional commitment. And thirdly, I believe that this faculty here is capable of great change. I believe that enough opportunities since we became a university have not been provided. Now I want to provide as much opportunity as I can to all of you for your growth. You are holding seminars, workshops, 
Excellent. Do more. These are windows to the world. You will learn from outside. The more you step outside, the more you learn. The more you stay inside this campus, the faster you will all rot, you know, and not grow. So these are some of my thoughts. I am sure that at the end of this day, you would have learned something new. I, it's already 11.10, we'll have a very short tea break, and then we'll start at 11.30. Is that the timing? Yeah, 11.40. And then please, we'll all have this thing here, lunch here, and then we'll start the next session. Please stay back till then. Please believe me when I say this. This is an important day in your lives. Do not take it lightly. Thank you. Motivating words. With this, I would like to request uh, Professor Ruksar Fatima, Madam, Registrar and Deputy Control of Examinations, to please give the vote of thanks. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. A very warm good morning to all. I have been entrusted the duty to propose the vote of thanks. Before going to that, I would like to pay homage to our late founder president, Padmashri Awadi, Sayyid Muhammad Muhammadul Husseini Sahib, without whose vision and mission, we all would not have been sitting here. It was his efforts that Khaja Education Society came into existence, and then all the stones, all the milestones of Khaja Education Society and Khaja Bandana's University came into existence. Next, I would like to uh, thank our Honorable Chancellor, sir, Dr. Sayyid Shah uh, Gesudaras Khusro Seni Sahib, who is an epitome of simplicity and vision. The aura and the grace of his personality cannot be told in two minutes. So, and I'm very much thankful to him for being there with us always on every step of our development and the development of the university. I thank our Honorable Pro Chancellor Sir, Sayyid Muhammad Ali Al Husseini Sahib, who is uh, giving us all his unstringent support. And he is an example of simplicity, of obedience. I would like all the young generation to follow him and see what obedience and how to keep the ego into control. If you can just sit with him for a couple of minutes, if you get that chance, we, you all will be lucky enough. This is for all the youngsters, as all the seniors already know him. I thank our Honorable Vice Chancellor, sir, Ali Raza Muswi, sir, for his encouragement and paving a right path for the university for its development. I also take this opportunity to thank him for bridging the gap between the management and the staff for which we have seen the results. I think he really needs a round of applause. <laughs> he has been relating to each and every small problem. I can say this because I have been working him for the past nine to 10 months. I know his pattern of work. Even a small work of an attender of a class four employee also doesn't go unnoticed by him. It is really a very great thing that you keep relating to people. Though he says that we have to keep our personality separate from work. But he has got that quality and we all should really appreciate the milestone that he has achieved in this eight months of time. Because we have never seen that. A right leader will always take us in the right direction. So we thank you very humbly, sir, for all the efforts that you are putting us through. Our resource person for the today's workshop is Professor Sayyid Ashwak Ahmed, sir. He is a very focused person. Since 2019, I have known him, though on a very short span of time we have talks, but I can tell you that giveaway he is going to take, give you today, the takeaway that you are going to take, it is going to be very potential. Because if he takes up any assignment, he feels that it is his duty to complete it. So I'm sure the workshop today, when he has taken up this responsibility, he is going to get all the seven criterias of NAC. 
imbibed in you and instilled in you. So, thank you so much, sir, for uh, giving us this opportunity and to be with us. Next, I would like to thank our deans, Dr. Nishad Arif Husseini, madam, Dr. Siddesh Sirwar, sir, Dr. Sheikh Kamala M. Muhammad Azam, sir, our director for IQAC, Dr. Abdul Basir. I thank all the administrative staff of university for being there with us. Before ending my vote of thanks and thanking you all, because this workshop has been organized for us, as means for you as well as for me. I am a professor as well as you all are. So it is for all of us that this workshop has been organized. So I request you all to keep your ego aside because we all think that we are professors. We know everything, what others can teach us. So I want you all to have a very positive mindset. Come forward, learn things, so that we can bring this university to its zenith. So that it comes on the picture of Karnataka. It comes on the picture of India. It becomes one of the best university of this country. With this few words, I thank one and all. And please be with us till the end of the workshop. Thank you so much. The tea arrangements are done onto the right side of uh, the auditorium. I'm director IQSC Coempe University to begin the training session. Assalamu alaikum. So, we will uh, start this session straight away. Coming to the accreditation by NAC or any agency, why do we do accreditation? Why do we go for assessment? See, most of the government agencies most of the government the government agencies be it uh, the state government or uh, the central government they insist upon the grading of all educational institutions our finances all our uh, you know whatever benefits we get from the government it all now depends upon our grading system we have around uh, 26 universities in Karnataka. Almost all universities were graded. The government of Karnataka itself have graded the universities. They have ranked the universities. Depending upon the rank, they give the funds. They allocate the funds. You can imagine because you have one state university in Gulbarga, you know, Gulbarga University. You know the condition of finances of Gulbarga University because government nowadays except salaries, they are not providing any kinds of funds, be it uh, research or any development activity, they are not going to give us any money. What they say, you generate your own money, own finances to be generated by us only. So what do we do? Why should we go for the assessment? You all know none of our institutions, educational institutions, they are ranked top among the world universities. None of our institutions, be it uh, Indian Institute of Science or IIT Madras or any institution, they are ranked, you know, Asian, they are ranked, they come within 100 or within 200. But if you take global ranking for that matter, none of our institutions are within the top ranking positions. So therefore, this process has become more and more important. And now, almost all educational institutions, be it IITs or IAMs or Indian Institute of Science, every institution is going for accreditation. So that is why they have made it mandatory, almost all institutions, including colleges. If, you, if your university has colleges, separately, the colleges, they have to go for this process. It doesn't mean that if university go for accreditation, colleges does, should not go. It is not like that. Even colleges should go. In our university, we have 100 colleges. Even government is asking for the data now. Almost all colleges, we are insisting upon almost all colleges for this process, NAC accreditation process. So therefore, now 
we have invited application, we have asked our uh, universities to prepare, our colleges to prepare for this process. Likewise, if you have any colleges under your university, you should be prepared for that. Once if you are ranked, then only you will be recognized. So that is one. And what are the advantages? Why should we go for this process? So first thing what we have said is accountability and commitment. See, we are accountable for our students. Whoever our students, you know, if we go out of our institution, we are all accountable for that. Many of the advertisements, you know, in uh, earlier days, you know, in 1990s and uh, early 2000, I used to see lots of advertisements, you know, saying that so-and-so university need not have to apply. I have seen it. Even now, indirectly they are saying top 100 institutions in NIRF ranking. Can you believe? Can you imagine which are those top 100 institutions in NIRF ranking? None of our institutions in Karnataka, we have so many colleges, 24 universities and thousands of colleges, around 3,000, 4,000 colleges. Among them, none of us are in this position to apply. Then where will our students go? If anybody, you know, if any institution calls for the faculty position, associate professor, as assistant professor, we will not be in a position to apply at all. Imagine, you know, if an institution calls for application, if our university is ranked among A grade or within 100, imagine the position of our students. Definitely, if they apply, they will get the job. Definitely, they will get the job. That is the situation. Therefore, accountability is very important. Then, facilities. See, we have to improve upon our facilities. That is the first step the university administration should look into. Improve the facilities and improve the you know, working atmosphere. And I will give one example. You know, people like us, if you take myself as an example, I work in a state university. I will not publish anything. Supposing if I get a scholarship, if I go myself, if I go to Singapore or UK or USA, will I remain same as I am here in this university? Definitely not. Because I will work same, my brain is same. My brain is same as I am here in Coimbatore University. If I go to Cambridge, my brain is same. But why will I work there in Cambridge? Why will not I work here? So that is the accountability you have to. You have to think upon it because everybody is now accountable. Everybody should produce papers. Everybody should, you know, improve upon themselves. That is what improvement. We, we should not depend upon the universities for the facilities. You know, we, we normally we say in our university we don't have any facility at all. We don't have anything. In our universities, many times we don't get current. So that is not the problem because if we don't have current, we use UPS, we, we use other means of power supply. So many things will happen. So that is what we have to be, you know, we have to be accountable for ourselves. Then R&D culture, it is very important. R&D culture, we don't have any R&D at all in our universities. What should we do? Development of research and development, you know, that is the foremost very important aspect in any university development. R&D, we have to publish papers. For that, what we have done? See, in our university, when I was IQSC director, what I have done? I have asked all the faculties to produce one paper. I have given them sufficient time. You know the situation in state government universities. None of us will bother because we know that nobody can remove us from our position, right? You all agree with that. None of us, you know, nobody can touch us because we go teach, get salary. Sometimes we don't teach also. Okay, we get salaries and we mark our presence in the attendance and we go, we take our salaries. Then when I became IQSC director, I insisted all the faculties to publish paper. I have given some time. And then I have, we have watched them for one year. The position remained same. Then we applied one condition that, you know, every year we get increments. We have linked the condition with the increment. If you don't publish paper, no increment. So suddenly people started, you know, panicking. They started publishing. Our output was 40 papers per year. Then subsequent years it become 150. Now it is around 250. 
You can imagine from 40, we have grown up to 250 publications per year. So almost all ranking agencies, they look for this. They look for the research and development. All faculties, you know, if you have five faculties, more than five faculties or six faculties, there are so many government agencies, they give you money for the development of the department. Like, you know, if you are a science department, you will get funds from FIST. DST, they give money for the development of the department. You can apply, you know, we have applied 26 applications we have submitted, nine were successful. Even one, if it is successful, it is a good amount. So you have to start, you have to think and apply for the departmental grants. You have faculty, you have faculty position now. I think all of your faculty positions have improved tremendously and you have to apply for that. You apply for the position. If you are individual faculty, you apply for individual grant. UGC gives you lots of grants for individual faculty. Every one of you, within a span of one month, you apply for the projects. You know, even if it is 10% or 15%, even if it is successful, it is a great success. Okay. So that is what we have to improve our R&D in our institution. Then other facilities. You know, once if we are developed, we can share lots of information. People start coming to us. We will start going to other universities, other institutions. Sharing of the information, recognition, uh, see, achievement and innovation. Innovation is very important. See, like, you know, we have, we will ask, you know, UGC asks for patents. How many patents you have developed? Engineering colleges, they have lots of scope for development of patents. So this, you have to think upon it. Innovations, you have to keep on working, research and development and try for this innovation. And identity, it is very important. Once if you are recognized, you will have the identity. See, our university was declared B grade in a previous NAC system. Then I was IQAC director. I said, okay, see, we have got our uh, you know, rank as B grade. Why don't we go for appeal? I went for appeal. Then subsequent visit, we got A grade. Then our university was recognized throughout Karnataka. See, everybody now coming to us. They are asking for help from us. Most of the other universities, including Mysore University, they are asking, they are coming to us for help. NIRF ranking, I've told you, we were 200 plus. Now we are 73 and 80. Again, people are coming to us. So what have you done and why uh, your ranking has been improved so much? That is the recognition you are going to get. Once if you are recognized, you can apply for so many funds from the government. So that is the another very important advantage of uh, this uh, accreditation process. Then, of course, there are other uh, uh, criteria like institution, you know, we will have lots of uh, institutional interactions and other things. So, apart from this, apart from this, we will know our weaknesses also. So, where we are weak, where we are strong, all of us, we will know. Once the publication, once the innovation, once the research comes out, we will know. I, from our university, know which department is very strong, which department is weak, and which are the faculties. We have arts, science, commerce, education faculties, which faculty is the best, which faculty is weak. All those information we will get. So, within another one month, it will be on your fingertips. You know, your administrators will have all your data. Who is publishing papers, who is not publishing papers, all those things. So, that is another aspect benefits of this uh, process. Then, internal areas of planning and resource allocation. See, what we do, see, recently we got uh, funds from UGC, we got around 10 crore rupees from UGC. Now, as Vice Chancellor, what he will do with 10 crores? So, first, first and foremost thing comes to his mind, Whoever works will get a lot of money. Lion's share will go to the department who works. He, their labs will improve. So that is what we have done. Whoever works, whoever have produced papers, we have given lots of money to them for their improvement. So like this, every time these things happen, if you 
are good in uh, the subject, if you are good in the development, if you are good in research, you will get lots of money. Only thing is that you have to apply. So those things you can do it. Then other aspects, you know, like uh, performance funding, I have told you already, there are improvements, method of teaching, it improves because once if you are uh, declared as a very good university, yourself, you know, will, uh, will be improved a lot. Your psych will improve, your behavior will improve, everything, the faculty will improve once if you are in a very good position. So how this grading takes place? See, we have this grading system starting from A++, A+, A, B++, B+, B, C, and D. So what is the requirement for government agencies? Above that A, 3.01. Recently, Mysore University were, you know, declared as A grade with the score of 3.01. You know, Mysore University, it is one of the oldest university. Now, the point, the, the score what they have got is 3.01. That is just A grade. Okay. So, other things, you know, B++, B, C and D, even though they are on the paper, but none of your government agencies come forward for you know, allotment of any kinds of funds. It is as good as, you know, having nothing. Therefore, always you should strive for A and above. And if you can take up the overall ranking as on uh, June 21st, 2022, you can see the grades that have received. 224 universities have got A grade. 165 from B grade and C grade, 17 universities. Look at the colleges. If you can see this graph, you can see many of the colleges and universities, they are in B grade. That means NAC is very strict in giving you the grades. Means you have to perform. Without performance, you will not get A grade. You have to show your performance. You can see the graph. 1,700 colleges, they have A grade, and uh, 5,800 colleges, they, are, they have B grade. And of course, C grade, you know, there are other colleges, like whatever the amount number is same, and 224 universities. 224 universities have A grade. Among them, many of them are private universities and uh, deemed universities. Very few state universities have A grade. You take any state for that matter, among the states, you know, some of the universities, most of the private universities, they are, they are classified into A grade. Sorry, this uh, slide is not that good. But universities, you know, now we have central, state, deemed universities, private universities, and other autonomous universities. All of them, they come under this NAC accreditation process. And uh, like institutions, we have agriculture, then architecture, business, all engineering, medical, forestry, dental, everything, pharmacy, everything, they come under this. So these are the institutions, you know, states, almost all states. None of them were omitted from the accreditation process. And now, see, if you have, if some of you have worked under NAC, and uh, as I heard from Vice Chancellor, this is the first uh, you know, accreditation process. That means you need not have to worry. You can directly go into this revised format. Earlier, we were when, uh, you know, our university is in fourth cycle now. Fourth cycle means every five year, one cycle. Every year, every cycle, the rules will change. Grades will change. The process will change. Now, finally, they are following this revised accreditation framework. New rules have come in, wherein you have to apply 70% you will be assessed online. Only 30% they will come and visit. So what are those uh, indicators we will see? We have two indicators. One is quantitative indicators, another one is qualitative indicators. There are two indicators you have to concentrate. Other earlier was different. Now since you are going for the first time, you need not have to worry about this. You have two indicators, qualitative and quantitative. Then ICT facilities, you know what is meant by ICT and other things. What are those 
indicators. You know, when we compare to the old format and this format, I am going to skip this because you need not have to worry about world format because you are going for the first time. The peer team will visit only for the 30 percent of your assessment. 70 percent will be done online. 70 percent assessment process. So, out of this, you know, what are the schemes who are all come under this assessment? You have health science universities, health science colleges, medical, dental, pharmacy, everything, open distance learning, Sanskrit university, teachers, education, everybody now come under this umbrella, under NAC. Because earlier teachers' education, NCT, they were the agency which were accrediting all the educational uh, institutions with uh, teachers' education, like B.Ed. and uh, M.Ed. courses. Those were the agencies. But now, these uh, NAC people, they have also taken over this, and they are assessing the educational institutions also. How do we prepare? Preparation. What should we do? We have to prepare IAQA. I am going to, you know, uh, impress upon you what is this IAQA and SSR and DVV, all this pre-qualification, peer team visit assessment. These are the steps uh, involved in the assessment process. First thing you have to do is IAQA. That is Institutional Information for Quality Assessment. That is the first step. Then SSR submission, that is self-study report submission. Then data verification and validation, DVV. Then pre-qualification. Once if you submit all these three, first three, you will know whether you are qualified or not. Because you will be assessed on 70% of the total score. 70% of the score will be assessed. Then once if you are qualified, then the peer team will visit. Peer team consists, you know, earlier three days visit used to be, now it will be only one day. They will come for one day, they will assess for 30% and they will give the grade and go. And then the outcome, finally, you know, the NAC will announce the outcome of the validation. This is the process what uh, the IAQ has followed, basic institution eligibility, that is the first step, then affiliation, SRA, statutory regulatory authorities like uh, AICT, then uh, MCI, then uh, BCI, then PCI, Pharmaceutical, Pharmacy Council of India, Medical Council, Bar Council, all those affiliation agencies, and then higher educational institution, academic output supported by uploading essential documents. See, now what they ask, if you say I have published one paper, means I have to upload the document. If you say we have 300 students got jobs, got placements, that means we have to upload the data. Authentic data you have to upload. That is the step now they have asked. You cannot, you cannot say, no, we will upload the data later and we will produce the data later. But earlier we, we used to do it because the NAC will visit and at that time we used to show all the data. Now it is not like that. Whatever data you produce, whatever meetings, even, even this meeting, whatever meeting we are conducting now should be uploaded. They will ask, they will ask how many meetings you have conducted, what are the workshops you have conducted, then they will ask for the proof. You have to upload the data. Okay. Then, after that, you have to pay the fees. There are, uh, amount is fixed. That much amount you have to pay. Once if you fail, in case if the requirement is not met. So that means you have another two chances, three chances you have. Once if I pay fees, you know, earlier we used to pay five lakh rupees. I think that amount may be the same. Five lakh rupees, I don't know, that may be the same. Once if I pay five lakh rupees to the NAC, they will you know, come and visit us. If we fail in the first attempt, that 70% marks if we fail, you have another chance of application. Another attempt you can make. Even in, in that attempt, if you fail, we can go for the third attempt. Three attempts are permitted. So within that three attempts, if you are permitted, then the next step, accepted, then they will visit the university. This is the process of assessment. What is this IAQA involves? So institution will be informed 15 days before that NAC visit will happen so and so dates. And then you can accept or reject. If you reject, then two more attempts will be given to you. 
okay so after acceptance once accept acceptance is done you have to prepare the institutional profile then extended profile then you have to submit the ssr self study report in that we have qlm qlm means qualitative metri matrix and qnm is quantitative matrix one is qualitative another one is quantitative these are the two matrix and then we have to produce the summary and we have to upload it into the portal once if you upload they will give 45 days time within 45 days nac will visit so during submission so what are the objectives what are the things you have to do so you have to go through the manual thoroughly you have to go through once if you are thorough with the manual so once if it is done then you have to understand the matrix see there are so many tricky questions in this qualitative and quantitative matrix see they will ask for the students number of students if i say number of students 500 it never ends there they will ask male and female if you ask male and female then they will ask within the state outside the state then outside the country so they will ask all those information in that you know male and female all those data you have to keep it in hand so all those data you have to understand the matrix very clearly what type of data they are asking what type of data you have to produce many of the questions we may not be able to answer them okay many of the questions will be like that because we will not have the data with us or else we will be lacking in such type of data so we have the options for that i will come to it later we can omit some of the questions not all questions will be omitted but some can be omitted so then upload the relevant document see once if you give all the information upload the document now it is the responsibility of the chairman each department chairman he has to get the information of the students so that is the first step you have to do see every five years they visit now your university is now running fifth year i think shortly you are going to complete fifth year so you have to uh, submit the ssr report now for that you have to get the information of the students first all of the heads of the department and the faculty you have to collect the information of your students for the past five years so i don't think none of you will have the information of your students how will you collect five years data now you are in 22 23 so most of you will be having some type of records right your department students who have joined and all in your department heads of the department many of them they will be knowing each of the students you can prepare one group you can call the students call them by phone if you get one number you can ask them to get the other numbers also so we are not expecting 100 percent output if say for example if you have 80 70 percent of the students information for the previous years that is good but now the last two years you please collect the information now itself last two years because you will be having the press students information with you you collect their information collect their data phone number email everything whatever address they have you please collect and keep it ready and also once if you collect the information the matrix i am talking about the qualitative and quantitative matrix they will ask how many students admitted 100 how many students qualified they will ask 90 qualified 90 qualified where are they now so they will ask such type of questions i will show one or two questions for your you know as example i can show it to you then non-applicable matrix most of the questions may not be applicable to you or else you feel like it is not applicable to us so once if you feel it is not applicable to us you can omit those questions okay you will be safer because you know if you say if you answer correctly okay if you it is a wrong answer your marks will be deducted so therefore you have to be careful on this non-applicable matrix you can say it is not applicable to our university and uh, other standard operating procedures uh, in uh, submission of ssr all those things you can follow coming to this ssr self-study report we have seven criterias i have requested the iqac director 
to appoint seven people for the seven criteria. They will be the pivotal people who will collect the information from each and every department. Because each and every department, heads of the department and the faculty in the department, they are responsible for collection of students' information of their students for past five years. So you have to be proactive in collection of previous information data, students' data, and these people will come and, uh, sorry, the, so this criteria, curricular aspect, one example I will give you, they will ask you how many times you have revised your syllabus. How many times you have re revised your syllabus? Anybody, any department head can answer this. How many times in, a, in one year, two years rise, how many years you will say? Once in three years. You have record for that? Which, what type of records you have? Please be seated. Yes? Yeah, BOS meeting one, then? After BOS meeting, what is the next step you are following? Academic council it will go. If you have faculty of science, arts, commerce, medical, those faculties will approve. All those records you should have for the past five years. Heads of the department will have all these records, conduction of BOS meeting. University will have the records of academic council meetings. So those records, you should keep them ready. Sir, one question yes, next yes. to you. Yes, Sir, please. we are guided by the NMC, National Medical Council. Yeah. So our syllabus will not be revised every four years alike. So we had one revision last three years back where new Medical Council commission had come. So we have revised our education uh, syllabus according to the uh, quality assurance uh, so system. Whatever so so yes. we have conducted workshops for that, medical education technology. So those records we have got. Yeah, that is what. See, whatever records you have, you should keep them ready for the past five years. In five years, say for example, 2018, if you have revised the syllabus, if you, if you did not revise for another next three years, they will ask why you did not revise the syllabus for the past three years. That record, you have to be careful. So say for example, 2018, I have revised my syllabus. Now it is 23. What NAC expects if you say three years, every three years, 21 or 22, you should revise your syllabus. So if you have not done it, it is negative point for you. So once if you say three years, you should produce the information for three years. That is what they expect. So in this question, you will not know. You will just say three years and you will submit. All these, you know, criteria, they are linked with one another. Very tricky, the questions, you know, they are very tricky. One question they will ask, see, for example, teaching, learning, and evaluation. They will ask number of students, number of faculty. They will ask the teaching faculty ratio. So you will be very happy, we have 300 faculty, 2,000 students. So 2,000 divided by 300, some number will come, 21 is to one. One faculty will have 21 students. Very fine. That is highly acceptable number. Okay. So in criteria, somewhere student support five, that question will be linked to the teaching faculty. You will be unconsciously writing negative here. Okay. That question and this question, though they are related with one another, you will write, you know, students output, students, they will ask something questions like that. I will show you some questions from that. Once if you say, you know, they will be related to the first question, first, uh, you know, criteria. Then similarly, we have research and innovation, then support and progression, almost those questions are linked with one another. You cannot escape, you cannot give false information. Okay, you have to give very authentic information. Therefore, I request all the heads of the department, all the heads of the department to collect the information from now itself. Once if you collect, we will analyze it because you know seven people are already there present. They will analyze your data. 
Okay, each criteria will have one person, he will analyze the data, he will sum up all the information. See, we have 35, 40 departments, 40 HODs will give the information to one person. So he will collect the information, criteria one, criteria two person will collect the information relevant to his work. Like that, you know, seven people will collect seven criterial information. Okay, then innovation, institutional values, you know, all these things are there, governance, you know, governance, leadership, and management. They will ask governance, leadership, and management. Very important criteria. You can easily score marks from this. Okay. So only thing is that you have to carefully answer all the questions. So one of the criteria, what we have done in our university, you know, first thing what we have done is maintaining cleanliness of our university. Once if you enter the campus, you should give the first info, you know, impression that your campus is very good. Okay, your campus, just looking at the campus, they should feel that, oh yeah, this is good campus. Okay, that impression you should give. So how will you give that? Once if I enter into your campus, you, I see a lot of garbage and other things, you know, how, how, what type of impression you will give? So that is my maintenance. So maintenance, each and every campus, each and every department, you know, in our university, what we have done? Uh, painting we have done. All, you know, to make uh, look beautiful, you know, we have painted all our buildings. Those people and came and asked me, just because of visit of NAC, you have painted all the buildings. What should I say? If I say yes, they will deduct marks. If I say no, they, see, they have seen that the painting is done already. Then I have told them, sir, it is not for you. We have got funds from the government. I have shown the records to them. This is the funds we have received from the government. I have to spend them. Luckily, you know, it is a coincidence that you are visiting now. So, those things we have maintained and boards, you know, all name boards I have changed. First and foremost, which uh, striking to the eye of anybody who visits outside is the boards. We have done beautiful boards. All our campuses we have done, you know, nice boards and you can see them everywhere. Whoever comes, they need not have to ask where to go. We have maps, we have boards, same thing you can do it. Because you are in the center of the college still, you know, you can do much better because our university is in the rural area. So we have done all these things. So then some of the criteria like student support and progression. Student support and progression, what they will ask? See, we have two types of students, broadly speaking. One is brilliant students, another one is weak student. We, can, we call them as fast learners, slow learners. So what you have done for the slow learners, they will ask, can you produce five years data for that? First of all, you have to identify who are the good learners, fast learners, who are the slow learners. Five years data, how will you produce? Two, 22, 23 batch now running, 18, 19 batch, how will you identify them? What have you done for them? And also the fast learners, what have you done for the fast learners? Have you improved, you know, have you given any special coaching for them? Have you done anything extra, additional thing for them to support the fast learners? What have you done for the slow learners? Have you offered any course, special course for the slow learners? What we have done? See, we have identified some students. We have appointed mentors. Mentoring is very important. So 10 students, one faculty mentor, he will come and share all the, you know, whatever uh, problems he has, whatever problems in studying and identifying the things, all those things, then the mentor will help him. He has to maintain the record. So many meetings I have conducted with the students. I have helped these people to do like this and their improvement. So earlier, student was scoring 50% of marks. After mentoring, he has scored 65% of marks. Such type of records do you have? You have to do it now. So all the data, two years data, now you please collect two years of data with all these criteria. I will show you one by one all these criteria. And also the institutional values and best practices. See, one question they have asked us, you know, we have chemical laboratory, chemistry department we have. They came and asked us, 
See, you are using chemicals, all dangerous chemicals. At that time, there was mishap somewhere in some university because of leakage of some radioactive material. Some students and faculty, they died. That was the condition in you know, a few years back. They came and asked us, you have chemistry department, you are using all the dangerous chemicals, where does this water go? That is what they asked. So what we do? We prepare our labs, we directly connect the outlet to some drainage. It will go and it will reach some river, or else it will go into underground. What have you done? They ask. They have asked us. Then, luckily, you know, I have seen many, you know, colleges, universities, what we have done. We did not do anything. We made some pit earlier. Though it was used or not used, that is immaterial. I have shown them this is where the water comes. All the chemical, they come here. They will, it will be stored here. We will treat them and we will let the water after some time. That is what they were really very impressed. And uh, waste, you know, waste generation. Lots of waste is generated. What will you do with the waste? They will go and see. Yeah, we have, uh, you know, disposing this waste because uh, our uh, VC sir said, you know, ours is in the middle of the Western Ghats. Fully forest area, protected area. We cannot just dispose of waste like that, simply like that. They come and ask us what are you doing with your wastes? So what we, have do, what we are doing, we are making pits and burying the waste. We have shown everything to them. Most of the wild animals, they come, they eat all the plastic, they will die. So that is what they come and see. They, they have each and every point they will come and see. So for that, you have to have records. OK, what will you do with waste? What will you do with the water, drainage water? Will you treat it or not? All those questions they will ask. Similarly, another very important is NIRF, National Institutional Ranking Framework. So simultaneously along with NAC, you have to go for this also. This is little bit uh, you know, more lenient than NAC because we have to produce all the information, teaching, learning, like similarly we have seven criteria. These criteria are also same. All the questions here also linked with one another. Criteria one is linked with five criteria, other criteria. Each question is linked here. So again, production of information is very important. That is why once if you prepare data for NAC, you can use same data here also. You can submit NIRF and NAC together. Though you will get very good grades in NIRF, I cannot assure you because they will never come and ask you for publication. These NIRF people, they will just go into the R sheet and other IDs. They will find out your publications. We have Web of Science, we have Scopus, we have Copernicus, we have so many agencies, you know. They will go into those websites and they will see the publication of your university. So like that only we were, you know, uh, uh, we never collect information about papers for, uh, you know, showing to NAC or any agencies, but they will collect information from us. Only thing, what you have to do? You have to publish papers in very good journals. Standard journals you have to publish, like Springer, Elsevier, Taylor and Francis, so many publishers are there. You have to publish papers only in those journals. There are so many predatory journals, you know, morning you go and submit paper, afternoon the papers will be printed. So none of those papers will be accepted even by NIAC or NIRF. So those papers are as good as waste. Okay, you have to publish papers, at least one paper per year. I have seen warning given by our vice chancellor. I think he is very serious now. So if you don't produce any papers, I don't know what will happen to your future. Therefore, you keep on submitting papers. Write good papers, submit them. Write good proposals, submit them. At least 100 if you submit proposals. Even 10, if, you, if it is sanctioned, it is very good amount. Even 10, out of 310 is very good amount. Even, we don't know because many of the agencies, they are ready to give money. Lots of agencies they give. Only thing, you have to give them very good proposal. That is what Romerjan is going to talk in the afternoon. If you give good proposal, you will get good funding agencies. 
So we have, from our uh, departments, we have submitted 20, 25 proposals for FIST program. Eight of them they got. Means it is very good amount, eight. Okay, each one of them will get three, 3.5 crore rupees per development of the department. You can try for those type of programs. Then uh, this uh, other agencies for arts faculties, other commerce faculties, different agencies, they come forward, agriculture, ICAR, ICMR, so ICCR, so all those things, they, they give lots of funds. So you have to give good proposal to them. So other than this, we have, sorry. So you all know about NBA, they are also one of the agencies. Uh, they also accredited some of the institutions. And their criteria, they have 10 criteria, almost similar to almost all, you know, NAC and NIRF. NAC has seven criteria, NIRF has five criteria, they have 10 criteria. All students' performance, students' output, everything. We want information like headcount information. If we have 50 students in a department, after examination, where are they? All 50 students on headcount write their names, mobile number, email, address, if they are, uh, you know, opted for any higher educational uh, position, you can write them. If they have opted for jobs, you can write them which company they are working. If they are working in a company, you have to get information about their salary, how much salary they are drawing per annum and all. So all this information you have to submit. Once if you submit, the NAC will contact those students. Randomly they will contact. And they will ask information from them directly. So that information, you, you should collect authentic information from the students. Where are they, what are they doing, what progress they have made. You know, if they have, you know, if a BSc student, if he has opted for higher education, those things. If a MSc, if he has opted for PhD, some of them might have visited abroad and they might have taken admissions in some foreign universities. All those information you have to collect. That is for the past five years. Okay, almost all information you have to do. So all these agencies, they operate on all the conditions. You know, key indicators introduced now is the teacher profile and quality. Teacher profile. I am a teacher. They will ask for my profile. Very important aspect in NAC. Whether the teacher has PhD, if yes, whether he, is, he has undergone any research activity, research development program, yes, what type of research activity he is involved with, what type of papers he has published, how many papers he has published, all the profile questions will be in this. QLM, they will ask qualitative matrix and quantitative matrix number they will ask. How many faculties? 300. How many papers published? 40. 300 divided by 40. 40, sorry, this 40 divided by 300. How many papers per faculty? Will you agree with, uh, you know, 30, 40 publications with 300 faculty? So here, the, you are going to lose considerable marks. So profile is very important. How many projects he has applied? How many projects are successful? All those things, they, are, they come into picture in this criteria. And uh, student satisfaction survey. So you have prepared a syllabus. You have to ask your students whether they are satisfied with the syllabus, whether they are satisfied with the course content. Have you conducted this type of survey? They will ask. So none of us, you know, we never speak with students. I visited one university, you know, University of Nottingham. So he was charging five pounds per question. I, I have asked him, sir, in our university, if you ask money, you will be suspended immediately for asking questions. Then he said, this will prevent students from asking irrele irrelevant questions. I asked my student, I will give you 100 rupees if you ask questions, none of them will ask. Whether it is irrelevant or relevant question, nobody will ask questions in our system. Okay, you have to encourage students to ask questions. Some, you know, whether they are relevant or irre irrelevant, the student, you know, his psyche will improve a lot. Asking questions will solve half of the problem. 
So that is why most of the system, you know, satisfaction survey, you have to ask the student whether you are satisfied with the course or not. So that type of survey you have to conduct. You have to ask your old students from the past 2018 batches, you have to ask them whether you are satisfied with the course content, whether you are satisfied with the teachers, whether you are satisfied with the teaching, ICT facilities they are using, method of teaching they are using, all those questions you have to ask. Okay, once if the students give the satisfactory survey, you have to upload them on your website. NAC will randomly contact those people and ask. Okay, if your question and their question, if they matches, you will get good marks. Satisfaction survey is very important. Then alumni engagement. What I request all the heads of the department to have an alumni meeting every year. If you don't have any alumni, please go now immediately today. You start one alumni association. Register them and from now onwards you start collecting information about the students. Each and every heads of the department have to do this. If I am from uh, science department, I have to start all the science department. If I am from arts, all arts faculty, medical faculty, all medical departments, you have to have one uh, alumni association. You have to register. Then one person should take responsibility for entire university alumni association. So university will have one alumni association and departments will have alumni association. So they are responsible for collection of data, all alumni data, the students' data who have passed earlier in the previous batches. So that is the most important step you have to follow. So otherwise, you know, you know, in nowadays, even in board of studies, they are asking for, you know, students' member. One student member you have to include in board of studies. When you are preparing syllabus, you have to invite one student and ask his opinion. So those are the things, you know, they expect from us and institutional values and so social responsibility. See, they will ask you, have you adopted any villages? Have you adopted any, you know, place wherein you have developed something? So you know what is meant by institutional, uh, the social responsibility? See, if I am an industry person, I have industry, what type of social responsibility I will have? So I am running a university, what type of institutional responsibility I will have. So university, you know, what we are doing, what we have done, we have adopted some villages. Adopting villages is nothing, you know, not like going and building toilets or building some roadways, building pathways, it is not only that. See, what we have asked, you know, we have asked our, some of our students to go and teach in some of the schools where there are no teachers. So even that is social responsibility for you. And we have NSS and NCC associations, you know, they will go and they will, you know, sit with the villages, village people. They will talk about pros and cons, how to improve their lives, lifestyle and all. Such type of developmental activities you can do. You adopt some villages, surrounding villages. Each department can adopt. I am geology department, I can adopt one village and I will go and you know, search for groundwater, I will tell them uh, these are the sources for groundwater. And if you are from arts faculty, you can do something like that. If you are from other faculty, you can do. Each faculty have their own type of assessment, own type of work they can do. But you have to produce the information, produce the data. One responsibility you have to do, institutional responsibility. If you are in the surrounding areas, what you are doing, See, you have medical college, you have engineering college, lot of work you can do, social responsibility work you can do. So that type of information you have to collect. And institutional distinctiveness. See, why our university is different from other universities? That you have to show. Why, why our university is different from Gulbarga or why our university is different from COK? That institutional distinctivity you have to show. What type of distinction, distinctivity you have? Can you name any one, one distinction from other universities? See, whatever they have, you will have. 
whatever you have, other universities will have. But for our university to be, you know, distinct among other universities, what type of work we have done? Yes? Mike? Board of examination is with every university. Sir, every year we have a Urs pilgrimage mm -hmm. where we manage about two lakhs people health, uh, health evaluation of those people and give free service to those people. So that is distinct for our university. Yeah, that, the, you know that, have you maintained any records? Yeah, that? all records are maintained. Record, for last 20 years, all the records are maintained. Yes, sir, one, one you have said, it is from medical college, medical university, medical thing. What about engineering? What about other our science faculties? What about our colleges? Different colleges we have, engineering colleges, civil engineering department, anything have you done? Distinctive features. So we have introduced a truly choice-based system in selecting courses for the students much before anything from the NEP had been stated. We started this in 2019, and we uh, threw out a number of courses in arts, humanities, social sciences, and sciences, in which students took time to select their courses based upon the uh, person who's teaching, the faculty, and the courses. In the mode of examination, we adopted a free course of examination system in which uh, there is this open book in which this is a library-based exam. They are supposed to refer sources and uh, answer a research-based question. And a take-home examination system in which they are given 48 hours to answer a research-based question. How but many people know about this, ma'am, in your locality? In our locality, in the Maybe sense... Whatever you the said is okay, but... Does the people living around stakeholders, do they know about this? Hmm? See what, I will give one example from our university, what, uh, uh, you know, this distinction, what we have done. We have one example I will give, like that we have several examples. We have one tissue culture laboratory in our department, in our university. They produce banana saplings. Okay, they produce banana saplings and they give free of cost to the farmers. You know, after that, you know, after some time, you know, it become very huge success and then they started charging 20 paisa per sapling. They give hundreds of sapling. The, the person, agriculturist, can take the sapling, plant them and get the bananas. That is one. Likewise, you know, we have, our area is known for this uh, araca and coconut plantation. So then we have taught them how to make plates, cups, you know, glasses from uh, this araca and coconut uh, leaves. So such type of things is distinctive for our university. We will show them records, we will show them the information, we will show them what are the activities we have done. Those are the two activities we have done. Just example I am giving you. Like that we have done many activities like this. Such type of activities have you done anything? other than teaching and other than this. So such type of things, if you have not done, you have to start. That is one of the best questions. You know, it carries a lot of marks in that. Maybe we are not as proactive as you have been, sir. But uh, uh, biosciences, biological sciences department. We will, see, we will, uh, I will show you some questions. You know, we can sit together and even it is not too late now. We can develop some methods, we can develop some techniques. Which are, which are distinctive to this region. Right. Okay, so then, these are the questions we were talking about. Okay, we have this quantitative matrix and qualitative matrix, and uh, the indicators what we have. We have criteria, seven criteria we have. Autonomous colleges we have, if you have any colleges, seven criteria, affiliated colleges, all seven criteria. Indicators, key indicators, that is called as KI, 34 key indicators for all, and uh, affiliated and uh, constituent colleges, we have 32. This qualitative matrix, 
qualitative matrix, we have 38 questions, even for autonomous college, 38, and for affiliated, it is 41. Quantitative matrix, it is 99 questions for uh, university, 98 questions for autonomous colleges, and 80 for affiliated and constituent colleges. And total matrix, qualitative and quantitative together, put together, we have 137 for universities, 136 for colleges. That means questions are almost same, number is same. Sir, yes? Sir, uh, I am from civil engineering department. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, every year we are doing surveying, sir, for uh, our uh, students. Uh, uh, we are doing survey, we are having one of the lab. So uh, nearby our college, we are going to the area where the water supply, water supply uh, system and the sanitary system is not there in that area. So uh, by taking our students to that locality, uh, we have collected all the data of uh, likewise number of houses, uh, number of people living there. So right now present data we are having. No, and have you done any work on that? Yes, sir, we have done work if on If you that. have done any proof you have, Yes, sir. Yes, that sir. is one of the good uh, thing, you know, you can show it. Yes, sir. Uh, from nearby water tank, we have yes. uh, taken uh, all the levels to that area, and uh, we have all the data of that uh, uh, water supply for uh, whatever the data needed for the water supply and sanitary. See, you can work on sanitation, you can work yes, on water supply, you yes, can sir. work on so many other aspects. Also, one more thing is, yes. sir, nearby our city, uh, one Ghosga Dam is there. Hmm. Uh, for for that dam, uh, uh, every year we were recording the data, like like for countering the catchment area, we were recording. Uh, at the time of the drought, uh, uh, what uh, what is the condition of that water in that dam? And at that peak level of the rainfall, uh, what is the condition of that dam? Okay. So uh, the storage of the data, all the data we are having in our department, sir. So uh, not only data, you have to you know involve the people. You have to show the physical work. Yes, sir. We physical work you have to show we went to the site yeah. we went to the site and we yeah. have interacted with those uh, locality people sir how many people benefited from that uh, we, we we are doing every year sir no benefited how many people are benefited direct beneficiary uh, direct benefited that is yes, that sir. data you have to collect okay okay, okay the going sir. and collecting doing work is not important but okay, beneficiaries sir. Okay. Whatever he said, around 2 lakh people, that is very good source, very good, way, you know, amount, large amount, you can say. Sir, benefited in, uh, like, was, like, uh, like what, what? Type Household, of see, if you, do, if you do any work, say, for example, I construct one toilet, there are 20 houses. Those 20 houses are direct beneficiaries. So Many, you know, one of the visit, they have asked me this question to me. Okay, sir, uh, then, then you are, your area is drought prone. Uh, Have you done any water harvesting plants in some of the villages? Okay. Those things you can do. You can go and do the you know, work in those villages. You can show them, uh, we have visited so many villages, we have done this water harvesting, we have done this water harvesting structures for this many houses, these are the beneficiaries. Such type of work you can do. Okay, sir, we have to extend our project to the sanctions yes. of the government project. Eh? Yes. Okay, okay, thank you, sir. So now, coming to the next, this is uh, the quantitative matrix. See, quantitative matrix, curricular aspect, we have seven quantitative matrix and two qualitative matrix questions uh, in first criteria. Second criteria, we have 18 and 5. Then third criteria, we have 29 and 7. Fourth criteria, 11 and uh, 7. Fifth criteria, 12 and 3. Sixth criteria, 7 and 12. Seventh criteria, we have 12 and 8. <coughs> Once if you submit this data, 70% of your result, you will get it in five minutes. You will get on this part, information. Then you will know whether you are qualified or not. You will, you will have marks for that. So 100% passing is 55%. So if you score 55 marks out of 70, you are pass. Then they will come for the next visit. Okay. So imagine if out of 70, if you score 60, you can expect A grade. Okay. There only you will know what type of grade you can expect. Because questions, they are very tricky. You will be doing those questions under Excel program. You will have marks for that. You will calculate the marks and you will put the marks there. 
Finally, Excel sheet will calculate and then it will be submitted to the NAC. Okay, so these are the questions you are going to answer. Exclusively of student satisfaction survey, they will do the student satisfaction survey. So you will give the information to the NAC, they will call randomly, you give 700 students information, NAC will call randomly around 10, 15 students, then they will ask questions to them. If your question and their question matches, it is fine. Okay. So, example, if you go into this matrix, we have Excel-based tables seeking all detailed quantitative metrics and uh, formats will be provided to you. <coughs> so, after that, you know, you can see some of the questions I will show you. Then you prepare the summary, executive summary. So, in that summary, we have introductory note, then criterion wise summary, then student strength, <coughs> sorry, your uh, SWAC analysis, sorry. So overall uh, analysis and uh, then we have the conclusive explanation about the institution's functioning. So all these criteria executive summary you have to prepare on one or two pages and then you have to submit it to the NAC. <coughs> then coming to the criteria wise marks allotted. See we have criteria one. So in criteria one we have four questions in this. One is curriculum planning and implementation. That is the question they will ask. For that, it carries 20 marks. Academic flexibility, it carries 30 marks. Curriculum enrichment, it carries 30 marks. Feedback system, it carries 20 marks. So this is cake work for you. You can score marks from this. See, because curriculum planning and implementation, all of us will frame our syllabus. We have different bodies, board of studies, we have academic council, faculty, science, arts, commerce, then it will be, finally it will go to academic council, academic council will approve the syllabus, and you have every three years revision of syllabus, and you have, see that is the criteria we are following. <coughs> okay, one of the question I am going to ask you, how many of you have prepared the syllabus with students included. You will say zero, then this 20 marks will go. See how tricky it is. You will say we have done all this procedure. You will ask, have you involved any alumni, any student, your, or else have you in, involved any person from the industry? Have you invited any expert? Have you conducted any seminar to prepare the syllabus? How many of you have conducted seminar for preparing the syllabus? <coughs> Anybody? <laughs> syllabus, preparing of syllabus, seminar. Yes, for preparation of syllabus, we have included the industrial expertise person. We have included the alumni. Yes. as well as whenever before going for the syllabus, we have a first briefing meeting, then yes. we'll go ahead. That is what they expect from all faculty, 40 departments you have. So, uh, for, for, for engineering, we I'm have I'm right I'm now I'm five departments. I'm giving you some example, ma'am, because 40 departments you have, yours engineering five. Yeah. What about science faculty? We have science faculty, we have, you know, science subjects. We have arts subjects, arts faculty we have. We have commerce faculty, we have, medical faculty, do they do the same procedure for all the faculties? For medical, they, they have got the NMC, no. as per the NMC regulation. Yes. For paramedical, I think they have included the external experts. Yes. So if you say this, I'm going to give you how they calculate marks out of 20. How much marks you will get? Okay, 20 is the criteria. I have 40 departments. Out of 40 departments, if 30 departments does same work, I will get 20 marks. If 5 does, like what you said, I will get 1 mark or 2 mark from this. Okay. Academic flexibility. What is this academic flexibility? 
How many of you know about academic flexibility? Each department, each subject, I can say, each course, each discipline will have flexibility to develop their own syllabus. University is not asking you to develop the syllabus what they wanted. How many of you can develop your syllabus on your own? Yes, ma'am? You are now under NEP, you cannot claim flexibility because government is preparing syllabus. Sir, good morning, sir. Yes. Uh, regarding academic flexibility, yeah. what we are having is we are having the open elective system. So starting from the fifth and sixth semester, so we are having... You are, some, you are talking uh, about... Engineering, engineering faculty. Engineering, yes. Okay. Yes. yes. So we are having open elective system where we are having a pool of subjects. Now, who will prepare the syllabus? Uh, sir, academic, we, before beginning no. of the finalization... Please. Does your syllabus is different from next engineering college? Your syllabus, your syllabus, we have five engineering colleges here in Yes, Uberna. sir, it, it is different. Each syllabus, they have their own different syllabus, each engineering college, or else VTO will prepare syllabus and give it to you? No, no, sir. No. We are having our own no. syllabus no. prepared. See, in our now NEP, science. Okay. Now what we have implemented, the Karnataka State Higher Education Council prepare the syllabus and give it to you. You are going to implement that syllabus. Ma'am, next year you will get uh, post graduation also. You, are, you please wait for one more year. You will get in separate, you know, one year and two year course for uh, PG also. Yeah. Yeah, one year, next year, you know, the new NEP batch will come and join the PG courses for science, arts, commerce, and education, isn't it? Yes. So you have to prepare the syllabus. Who will prepare the syllabus? The government. government. There is a, uh, you know, uh, room for 70% of the Now government. you tell me what flexibility you have. You have to be very careful in explaining this here. Yes. OK, you cannot say. Then I will ask, government is preparing. How can you claim you have flexibility? So many choices are there. So that is what, you know, this. Then curriculum enrichment. Hmm. What type of questions you can expect from this curriculum enrichment? Enrichment of your curriculum. You are teaching English. OK, what type of enrichment you can do, apart from conventional everyday teaching? We have to uh, develop the speaking skills, the writing skills and uh, communication in, on all levels. Actually. See, we have language lab. Yes, we have the language one, one, lab, but one language of the lab will not provide that which a teacher can do. Okay, so each and everything, you have to, you know, not only your department, every department should explain about this. Okay, then feedback system. How many of you have feedback system? Yes? You are from? Medical, okay, good. I am the medical education okay. unit coordinator in medical yeah. college. So we are having the uh, syllabus which is given by the National Medical Commission. Okay. But uh, out of that, we have to make that curriculum. Hmm. So we have curriculum implementation support programs. Okay. Every year we conduct that and involve the various faculties uh, depending on the Availability. What you have feedback have. system? Feedback system we are having. From whom we will collect feedback? Both, both the stakeholders. From the uh, uh, students, okay. one is, and from the teachers. You have any data both. for that? Yeah, yes, yes. Good. Yeah. Good. What about other departments? All students, you know, all, each and every department on headcount, you should collect information from students. If you have 2,000 students, 2,000 feedbacks you should give, not one or two. If your total, what is the strength in your university, madam, now present? 70? 700? No, no, students. Uh, students are uh, 1,700. 
1700, all science, all faculties together. engineering, commerce, everything, all faculties. You have 1700 uh, feedbacks from students. You have to collect. You have to collect students' feedback. There is a questionnaire for that, students' feedback. Okay, each and every question, the students have to answer. Okay, they are designed in such a manner See, the student, you need not, they need not have to favor the teacher, nor favor the department, nor the university. Questions should be framed like that. They will, first thing they will come and see is the student feedback. Have you collected teacher's feedback from your colleagues? We have five teachers in one department. Four of them will give feedback on one person. Have you done that? Please do it now for five years. Okay. All the teacher's feedback you have to collect. Okay. And these feedbacks will go to vice chancellor directly. Vice chancellor will comment on this. Okay. Students' feedback will go to vice chancellor. Say, for example, some 20% of students will complain about one teacher. See, vice chancellor will call the teacher and he will counsel him. After counseling, next batch, if they give same feedback, then he has to take action on the teacher. So, such type of feedbacks have you collected? You have to collect for five years. How will you collect? Because many of them students have already gone now. Yes. You have to give some format. You have to prepare a Google form, Google sheet, something, and you have to collect information. OK. So this is one criteria. OK. See, question. How will be the question? How many marks you will get? You see. What is the question? Percentage of students undertaking field projects, internship, current year data. Percentage of students. You know, the question is number of students undertaking field projects or internships, data required as per data template in section B. You know, in that uh, format, it will be. The formula is number of students undertaking field projects or internship divided by total number of students. You said internship in uh, engineering college. You have 1,700 students. You will produce 50 students on top, 1,700 students bottom into 100. So how many marks you will get out of five? Sometimes zero, isn't it? So. Every department, every faculty should concentrate on this field project, internship, because now multidisciplinary approach, everybody should concentrate on this. Everybody, you know, irrespective of, you know, if you say I am a commerce student, commerce student have very good internship programs. You can send them to industries, you can send them to some visits, field visits, you can give them some mini projects, you can ask them. You can give some small assignment to your teacher, students. If you are from uh, engineering, you can give some assignment. If you are from medical, you can give some assignment. Uh, science faculties, arts, commerce, each one of them you can give some assignment. You can ask them to go for internship. So this is the data wherein you can get very good marks, provided you should do it. Otherwise, you know number, you have shown you in the first criteria number of students. Okay, number of students, 1,700. Number of students taking internship, 50. That data doesn't match at all. Then uh, programs, number of programs which offers internship projects. See, we have, say, 20 departments, 20, 25 departments. Among 25, 20 departments, how many of them are offering internship program, how many are offering this uh, other programs, projects and other things. See, I've told you every department, 
every uh, you, uh, irrespective of art, science, and commerce, they should offer this. They should send their students outside for their exposure. If I am from sociology, I have my own method of uh, sending them to the you know, industry visit or else some other thing. If I am from political science, I can send them somewhere. If I am from civil engineering, if I am from mechanical engineering, I can send them somewhere. Isn't it? Every student has to do internship here. OK, this is one question. I will show another example here. Another question is institution integrates cross-cutting issues relevant to gender, environment, and sustainability, human values, and professional ethics into the curriculum. Look at the question. So you have to upload description with maximum 500 marks, 500 words. Means you have to write two pages about this related to your curriculum. You have to understand that question very clearly. So if you understand the question and if you write what are the human values, it is asking human values in a syllabus curriculum. It is asking ethics in your syllabus. So how tricky it is. So far I have asked you a question about how many of you have revised the syllabus. All of you said three years. Now I am going to ask you ethics into the curriculum. Now I am asking human values. Most of you will ask, I am history department, how can I add ethics and human values? I am from Kannada department, I am from Urdu, how can I add? Madam will be knowing because she is dean of arts and humanities. Isn't it, madam? This, this, these are all, you know, as far as I am concerned, we are going to get maximum marks from this. These are the only questions we are going to answer because other questions are very tough. We have to follow certain rules and conditions in our curriculum development. These are the two questions in one. Now coming to the quantitative matrix. See, five years data. Average percentage of last five years data, multiple choice questions, current year data, current year data ratio, yes or no questions. There are so many questions in this quantitative matrix. They will ask for data five years. In sometimes they will ask yes or no. You will have only two options. Either you say yes or you say no. If you say no, in uh, fifth criteria, this question will come again. So therefore, before saying yes or no, you have to understand that question correctly. See, I will show you an example here. Last five years data. What is the question? Percentage of programs where syllabus revision was carried out during last five years. So it is asking percentage of programs. See, it is asking sub-questions, you see, how many programs were revised out of total number of programs offered during last five years. So I'm, my university, I'm offering 25 programs. Out of those 25 programs, how many of them have revised for past five years? How much I will write? I will write 25. 25 programs offered, 25 revised. Then next question, number of programs offered by institution during last five years. Number of all programs offered. How many number of programs they are offered? Asking numbers. Look at the question. Number of programs in which syllabus was revised during last five years divided by number of programs offered by institution during last five years. So I am offering programs. You know, one program I am going to offer another program after some time. Then another, uh, after one or two years, I am going to offer another program. OK. So I say number of programs which syllabus was revised 25. See, number of programs offered by the institution during last five years, I will say 30. 30 programs I am offering. Out of 30, 25, we have revised syllabus. Then multiplied by 100, I will get one number. OK. This question, we have to you know, add relevant documents. So why I am saying 30, why only 25 we have done? See, I'm Next question they will ask somewhere in other criteria, 
how many new programs you have included. If you say zero, these questions become irrelevant. They will ask number of new courses introduced for past five years. How many new programs you have introduced? You will say zero because every year we are teaching same thing. Syllabus will be same, no revision, nothing. No programs are added. We are going to, we have, we have to say that, you know, the programs are added, new programs are added. You know, lot of development is happening around us. Each program, as per the requirement of the students, we have offered this program. So, so many students passed out. So many syllabus we have done, all those things you have to add. So, supposing if I say 25 and 25, then next question, how many new programs you have introduced? If I say five, they will ask this question again. Why you have said 25 here? How come you have added five questions, five new programs there? So it is all interlinked. Another question you can see, average percentage of courses having focus on employability. Em entrepreneurship, skill development during last five years. How many programs of your programs focus on employability? How many programs? Anybody? Madam, you are Dean. Huh? Sciences, we have, in the last three years, we have added food and nutrition. No, no, no. We are asking how many of your programs are targeted towards employability? Yes. See, I'm running Kannada department. I say I run only for employability. If my students pass, they will get this job. We are hiring. We are not only hiring, outsourcing them because uh, uh, subjects like food and nutrition and biotechnology have takers. See, medical, no problem. Engineering, no problem. What about the faculty, arts, science, commerce, those faculties? Commerce students still have to, we have commerce <coughs> undergraduate. Hmm. Don't have See, that is why, see, these questions, you know, they have asked, you know, entrepreneurship, have you developed anybody? Have you focused your syllabus in these lines, even medical, even in engineering, even in other uh, art, science, commerce faculty, they will ask. How many of you have developed, how many of you have developed industries, entrepreneurs, how many students number, they will ask. If you say five, they will ask which are the companies they own, where are they, address everything, they will ask. So such type of data, these are all linked with one another. Then you look at the question here, it will come in Excel, you will ask, you have to enter the numbers there. That is summation of percentage per year divided by five. Percentage and if you answer everything correctly, you will get 10 marks. If not, you will get one or two. So that criteria, entire criteria I have shown you, some 40 or 50, 100 marks in criteria one. Out of 100, you will get 20. So then seven criterias, you will not even go near 3.01. Then multiple choice questions I have told you, what type of multiple choice questions you will have? Feedback for design and review of curriculum. This is the feedback, uh, this mechanism is in place for obtaining structured feedback on curriculum syllabi from various stakeholders. They are asking stakeholders. Okay, if I run medical college, who are my stakeholders? If I run engineering college, who are my stakeholders? Other conventional courses who are my stakeholders. Students, teachers, parents, you know, industries. So everybody comes under stakeholders. How many of you, you know, they ask students, teachers, employers, alumni, parents. They are going to ask this question, you have to answer multiple choice. Okay. We have to collect all the information. You have to call parents. Parents will be very angry because their children might not have got their jobs. Okay, they will come and write whatever they want. So you have to frame questions in such a way that you know they have to answer 
and also you have to satisfy all these questions. Okay. See, NAC is not easy. Like what we are thinking, you know, you are imagining something, you know, we get A grade or B grade is not like that. You can imagine, uh, you know, the plight of the students, teachers, and also the parents, industries, all those things, they come in picture. And more than that, the institution, the uh, administrators, what they think about us. Okay, then these are the data you can see. Up for one, if you say four, the first one, any of the four above, the, I will tick A, I will up for A, I will write A. Okay, once if I write A, you will have related question in uh, criteria eight or seven somewhere. Okay, related criteria, that is why I have told them, you know, seven criteria, people who are collecting seven informations, they have to collect very meticulously all the information and keep them ready. Then we have to go through, we have to do meetings, head of the department meetings with administrators, then only we will prepare the SSR. Then you can see the other question, average percentage of courses having focus on employability, entrepreneurship, same, I think it is same. Okay. Next question, this is in second criteria, percentage of teachers using ICT. For effective teaching, learning management system, e-learning resources, etc. Okay, how many of you use ICT? How many of you use? You have 300 faculty. 300, I will write 300. Okay, in my assessor, I will write 300. 300 divided by 300 into 100. So I will get 100%. So easily I will get seven marks. Okay, if I write like this, Next question, they will ask how many of you have given notes. They will ask from students, not from you. Have your teacher given notes? If 10 of them say no, you have written here yes, then your marks will be deducted. Okay, ICT means not only presenting with PowerPoints, not only that, there are different criteria for ICT presentation. So each and every student, each and every faculty should adopt one or two ICT methods, techniques. That is why our Vice Chancellor said, next structured development, one by one. He will provide you with all the digital boards, digital platform with all projectors and all. You have to prepare the presentation. You have to share with the students before the commencement of the class. So as soon as the students join, you should give all your presentations to the students. That is what they will ask. Have you given presentation to the students? Students, if they get notes, they will say yes. If they don't, they say no. Okay, all, everybody, everyone, you should start preparing presentations, you know, in ICT setup, all of you. Next visit, I am going to ask same thing from your IC, this IQAC coordinator. Then I will ask Vice Chancellor to visit your classes while you are teaching. Directly, Vice Chancellor will go and visit your classes. He will not come informing you. He will come just, just like a visit. He will come. He will see how, you, how is your presentation and all. How is your class? He will come and see. Take the information from you directly. Okay, so these are the things you have to follow. Next one. Okay. Next one, ratio of students to mentor. I've told you mentoring is one of the very important criteria. You appoint 10 students. If you have five faculties, 50 students, each faculty you allot them 10 students for mentoring. He will be involved with those students. Okay, he will guide them. He will, you know, whatever problems they have, he
he has to address all those problems. The mentor should address all those problems. If you have any academic problem or learning problem or library issues, anything, that mentor will address all the issues. So each one of you, each faculty, you have to take some students as your, you know, you have to be their mentor. Okay, that data you should produce. So all faculties, you know, 1,700 students divided by 30, so many students will come to you. You will be their mentor. Okay, you have to guide them, career guidance, counseling, everything you have to do. Other, other you know, psychological, other counseling, the u university will appoint counselors for that. So all those things are included here. So this ratios also, then yes or no questions. Availability of remote access to e-resource library. Who is librarian here? Librarian. Who? You are librarian. You, you are librarian for uh, university or college? Hmm? Only medical college. What about other engineering college, library? College library? You have all the facilities, remote access and all? Yes, sir, we are I can I can visit your library now yes, through sir. my mobile phone? No, sir. Why? <laughs> Still we are hmm? You have to prepare remote access. Each and every student of your uh, you know, uh, medical college should get access for all types of e-resources. How many e-resources you have? Sir, now we are having a membership with the Telnet. Hmm? Telnet, Telnet. No, e-resources, not books. I'm not asking books. Not hard copies, what we get from the library. E-resources, which I can get it from my mobile phone. If I access your library, I should get that e-resources. No, sir. Not even one. With the help See, of mobile, we can't access this. E-resources, they contain online journals. Okay. Thesis, online thesis. Okay. Books, online books. Textbooks, online. These facilities are available in our library, sir. Hmm. But we can access with the help no, of no. computer, sir. Digital library. Digitally, you know, you have to give Digital. access. Yes, you sir. have to give user ID password to every student uh, with so the help that of we can directly IP, we access. Can use, with the help of static IP, we can use this facility in our, our library only, sir. Yeah. Only one. What about engineering college and other? So a lot of work we have to do. Now we have to set up library first. Library, you know, you have lots of marks for library. Yes, all... No, that is what you have to develop this e-resources. You have to appoint librarian now. I, I, IQSC director, you should take responsibility now. That uh, library resources, Then, what about internet? All students have internet facility. So, available bandwidth of internet connection of the institution. So, what is the bandwidth you have? Campus network. One GB, two GB. One GB PS line you have. So definitely, it depends on the systems that we use. Usually for students, we have got 40 Mbps we give. So no, it not that, madam. Line, you know. That line, line. It, it, institution, it, it, you know, almost all universities in Karnataka 
we have nk uh, national knowledge network exactly. they give us one gbps line yes sir so some institutions they have two gbps so that line do you have in your university no sir, absolutely not we have you got are, our fi own fiber optic cable you are getting it from uh, private uh, yes sir. vendors okay yes sir we have so this also you have to develop so we have to take it through the government yes then this other qualitative matrix you can see the qualitative matrix how the questions are the curricula developed bar adopted have relevance to the local national regional global development needs with learning objectives that is the question they are asking so this is the qualitative matrix include the all the program they are asking to write in 500 words so about the development of the curriculum about the importance of your curriculum in the local national global level and see the other question institution integrates cross cutting issues relevant to gender environment and sustainability human values professional ethics have you seen this question somewhere yes see this questions you have seen so many times they will come to you again and again so this is the matrix they will ask you can see here calculation of scores the curriculum enrichment you have done here all the metrics you have attempted maximum scores you can see possible scores 40 60 20 and uh, total score is 120 so this is the total score for the curriculum first one curriculum one and in this curriculum you have 120 marks out of 120 marks how many marks you have scored see you have scored 45 and 30 it is around 75 out of 120 75 marks you have scored so like that each and every question will have marks like this it will be for 70 percent so this quantitative matrix preparation uh, you know in ssr and other uh, uh, system we will see how it is done see this dvv process uh, in case of deviation clarification will be uh, sorted from higher education institution because whatever questions they have asked if there are any clarifications you have to be ready to answer them then pre qualifiers for 30 marks then you get the result whether it is passed or failed if it is failed you can have another attempt okay so these are the processes involved in this system then pre qualifiers pre qualifiers means before submission of ssr you have to submit 30% of quantitative matrix they are, they are going to ask pass if you are passed you will get the visit in 30 days otherwise you will have to wait for another 6 months fees you have to pay so we have this student satisfaction survey so these are the scores how the student satisfaction survey will work it is not done by you they will do it okay see this how much of the syllabus was covered in the class one question they will ask each teacher will cover syllabus they will ask the question how much percentage what is the percentage of syllabus covered in class our university you know normally we will cover up to 100 percent syllabus but some of the teachers they will not do they will not complete the syllabus and they will say something and go students they are the ultimate authority you know who can say about this answer to this question if they say only 20 percent covered then what is the second question you can sir how well did the teacher prepare for the class that is the second question they will ask from the student how well the teacher able to communicate the teacher's approach to learning can be best described as it will ask you know how well you describe the communication and how well the teacher communicates and how well he prepares and comes to the class normally we have same syllabus i am teaching from past 10 15 20 years i never prepare for the class okay i never prepare and go because i am teaching the same syllabus same thing so all these questions they will ask from the students not from the teachers 
So you have to be careful in assessing the students. These are done by NAC, but you have to be answerable for everything. Then the process, you know, the same process, I am not going to go in details of this because you are too early for this process. So criteria two, second criteria we have, these marks for this last one, you have seen 150. Now you are seeing 350 marks. 350 marks, students' enrollment and profile. Student enrollment profile. I have asked you the teacher-student ratio. Now I am asking you student enrollment. What is student enrollment? I have 50 seats in my department. How many students are admitted out of 50? If I say 30, means my course is not good. Enrollment. See, why students are not enrolling in your class, they are going to ask. That is what students' enrollment and profile. We have 1,700 seats. How many seats are full? How many seats are filled? That is important. That is the profile they are going to ask. Criteria, sorry, to, to the students' diversity. How many seats you are giving to the other students from other states, other countries, and uh, other university students? That is the diversity they are asking. Teaching learning process, all those, you know, like ICT and all I have told you. Then profile, teacher profile and quality, whether the teacher is qualified, whether he has PhD, whether he has MPhil, that type of quality. Evaluation process and reforms. In evaluation, how, what are the reforms you have brought? What are the methods of your evaluation of the students? And how you are going to conduct the exams? What are the results? Then students' performance and learning outcome. How many students are passed in that exam? And what are their performances they are going to ask? Student satisfaction surveys, finally, they will do it. So all this will give you 350 marks. So how many marks you can score from this out of 350? 30. Think so. Good. 300 means it is very good score. Now earlier, earlier question out of 150, we could be able to get 70. That too, okay, here, See, the enrollment, teachers, students, you know, if you say 30 seats available, if you admit 10, so each department criteria they will ask, not for overall criteria. Each department. We are not talking about open elective, madam, here. No. I am talking about one discipline. One okay. Discipline. okay. One discipline I am talking, civil engineering. Okay, fine. Civil engineering intake is 100. Yes, one okay, 100 or 150. No. How many students you are going to admit out of 150? Now the percentage is low, but ideally it should be 120. No, no ideally it's 120, but your admission, you say 150 intake. Out of 150 intake, if you admit less than 50 percent, it is serious problem. Yes, definitely. Okay, that is why you have to be very careful in answering all these questions. Intake, you see what we have done? Intake, I will give an example what we have done. Our intake is 55. Okay, out of 55, we have one seat for NCC, one for NSS, one for DC you know, defense personnel, one for agriculturist, you know, who have committed suicide, one for gender minority, one for so many seats, they come in intake. None of the students will apply under those criteria. Okay, those criteria will be, you know, without students, they will not come. Who will come, you know, freedom fighter, children of freedom fighter, now 75 years, all freedom fighters are old. Their grandchildren will come. So those questions will be here. Okay, they will come under intake. 50% of our intake will go as waste in selection of our uh, this thing, you know, criteria. Therefore, while selecting the intake, you have to classify them. That is what we have done. 
then some departments, what we do, some, say for example, zoology, biochemistry, biotechnology, some computer science, they have huge demand. Students will come, more seats, you know, you are going to add another 10 seats, like payment seats or, you know, self-financing courses, you will add. Once if you add, you will add for all other courses. Those who are not in demand, raise 50, you know, 20 seats for everybody. So our intake from 1,000 will become 2,000. How many students we will admit? 800. So that is why intake, students, you know, enrollment, you should be very careful in allotting the criteria-wise, you know, students' intake. So therefore, even in our state government, we say group 1, 2A, 2B, 3A, 3B, they classify and give intake for everybody. So such type of things you should follow. In that, look at the question here. The institution assesses the learning level of the students after admission and organize special program for advanced learners and slow learners. That is what I was talking to you earlier. Have you done any program for advanced learners or slow learners? It is 30 marks. You can say, yes, we have done for advanced learners these programs. Slow learners, we have done these programs. If you write, you will get easily 30 marks. But you have to produce data information. Okay, then you can see students' full-time teacher ratio. They are not asking about part-time, full-time. Ours, we have 2,400 students, 2,600 students. Our full-time teachers are 80. Our present, you know, all, all universities in state, same situation. Now we are less than 100. In another two years, we will be less than 50. But students will be 3,000. So that is what they are asking. What is the full-time teacher ratio? Means, if, they, if you say, yes, this is the ratio, then in next question, you are, they are going to ask how you are going to you know, satisfy the requirement of the student's teacher ratio. By appointing guest faculty, by appointing temporary faculties, by appointing inviting experts from outside, so many things we can say. But you have to give the data here. See how well related they are from one criteria to another criteria. Then, this student satisfaction survey, institution will have to submit the entire database of the students. I have told you, headwise collection of students from the head of the departments. Okay, they will submit the students' details to the IQAC director. IQAC director will submit it to the NAC. Out of 1,700, NAC will call 10 people from on random basis. They will call 10 and ask the questionnaire. You have seen the questions, what type of questions they will ask. Okay. And uh, the response should be received from at least 10% of the students. Means out of 1,700, 170. 170 students they will call and ask. And uh, the, if the response rate is lower, then the limit, the metric, will not be taken up for evaluation. Means you are going to lose these marks under student satisfaction survey. How many marks you are going to lose? Sorry, here. The last one, 50 marks you are going to lose. OK, therefore, you have to provide all heads of the department should give head count of the students. That is very important. Head count of the students you have to give. Then these are some of the other benchmark values. You can see institution integrates cross-cutting, relevant gender. Same questions you can see again and again. And you can see also the values, benchmark values, what they have given. And you have to tick, you have to answer all these questions. And the third criteria, you can see the marks, 10 marks for Resource mobilization, innovation, research publication and awards, extension activities, collaborations. So 120 marks in this criteria. If your research and R&D is good, this is cakewalk for you. Otherwise, the growth of institution entirely depends on this criteria. 
If you want to get A grade, get good marks from this. If you want, if no improvement, nothing in this, you will not get A grade. So therefore, resource mobilization, I've told you, each and every student, every teacher should apply for projects. Then innovation, each and every student, teacher should work on innovation. Publication, one publication minimum per year. Means 300 publications, if you have 300 teachers, you will get. And extension activities, you have to get lot of projects, extension projects from outside. Collaborations also you have to do. Extension projects, lots of extension projects you can get from here. So these are the criteria and these are the questions you can see. Resource mobilization, 120 marks. Sorry. Criteria four we have physical facilities, library as learning resources, IT infrastructure, maintenance of campus infrastructure. 100 marks for this. Then criteria five, student support, students progression, students participation and activities, alumni engagement. So 130 marks for this. And criteria six, governance and leadership, 100 marks for this. Then IQAC, you see IQAC, maximum marks, 30. What type of questions you will have IQAC? When it is started, members, meetings, yes, we have conducted three meetings, we have conducted four meetings. If you add data, you will get 30 marks. Last criteria is there. Seven, criteria seven, we have 100 marks. All this, you know, gender equity, environmental, you know, consciousness, we have to get the audit, environment audit, green audit we have to do. Then inclusion and uh, uh, situatedness, where the campus is situated, all those things. And then human values and professional ethics. So best practices, 30, and institutional distinctiveness, 20 marks, total 100 marks. So these are the criteria you are going to answer in the NAC assessment. So these are other uh, questions you can see, percentage of teachers with PhD. So all these questions, you know, you cannot hide them. You can, you have to answer how many courses with choice-based credit system, PhDs, and uh, percentage of past students, and uh, research projects per teacher. See here, that question is there 3.2.3. Average number of research projects per teacher. If your teachers are 300, if there are no research projects, you can see the you know marks you are going to lose, how many marks you are going to lose. Then you can see the publication. Only in Scopus, Web of Science, or PubMed, Indian Citation Index. Only papers published in this are counted. Otherwise, your papers are useless. It should come under Scopus, or else it should be under Web of Science, or it should be under PubMed, or Indian Citation Index, only in this. Otherwise, all predatory journals, whatever we publish, will be useless. Then other platforms like Swayam and other things, MOOCs, those things I will talk to you in uh, you know coming sessions, because this involves a lot of resources. MOOCs preparation and teachers, you can earn money also in this, you know, you can, if you have developed some courses under this Swayam and other platforms. These are all for university teachers. These questions are for university teachers. You can see quality assurance initiatives of the institution. You can see IQAC, NIRF, uh, academic and administrative audit, all these things is the responsibility of IQAC. So these are all the profiles. I have given you all this peer team visit final, and they will come and visit, assess for only 30%. 70% already is done, and they will come for 30%. And no other uh, this thing, they will not announce, they will not give you the names who are coming. Only you will know one or two days before the visit. They will not announce anything. So these are the grades finally, they will give the final grades. So disclosure, all whatever you do, you should put it on your website, university website. All information, SSR, uh, this uh, IAQA, IAQR, and uh, IQAR, all those things, you should put it on the notice board. AQAR, annual 
this thing i think you have done ek so all these things you have to put it on your website so again this assessment this your questions will be like this you are, you have you are going to directly enter into the portal the nag portal will be like this and uh, you, they will ask questions you have to answer in this directly so all corrections you can make additional removal you can make you can select your own questions these are all screenshot so optional metrics we were talking about optional metrics you can skip up to some percentage 5% of the questions you can skip if they are not relevant to you you can opt out you need not have to answer those questions that means you your uh, uh, marks you know will be influenced but you i what i suggest is you need you should not omit even one question even if they are irrelevant you have to try to do it so after peer team visit they will assess for 30% of the marks and then finally you will get the information part 1 part 2 part 3 all sections they will record and then finally they will announce the result so this is the final outcome of the visit so peer team visit they will uh, report only on the qualitative matrix quantitative matrix statistics already is done and then last finally you will get the grade sheet so i think here it ends so these are all the calculation i will not concentrate on them because these are all the strength and weaknesses how you are going to do it i will do it you know practically with uh, this iqsc people so thank you if you have any questions you can ask so our vice chancellor has come he has asked all of you to ask questions <laughs> he will be watching all of you now sir one my question is yeah. uh, you told uh, university has flexibility in syllabus, syllabus yes thing. but medical education is regulated by uh, national medical commission and all the syllabus and uh, this one will be given by nms yeah so we cannot uh, overrule and uh, no no that is what i am i was talking to you hmm. because see the criteria will be different for medical it will be different for engineering it will be different for university courses it will be different for professional courses see for us uh, now we are under nep i can always answer that the syllabus is prepared by karnataka state higher education council and we are going to adopt it okay that is one that criteria will become irrelevant for you okay. if it is you know if you your syllabus is prepared by some council and given to you okay that is what they say questions if they are not relevant to you you can drop them okay. and for us for uh, until now we had autonomy until the nep when uh, nep the syllabus is prepared by government of karnataka they have their own bodies they prepare the syllabus and give okay otherwise we had full autonomy until now even now our pg courses we have autonomy we prepare our syllabus on our own many of the courses may be like this engineering and all vtu may not be involved in preparing syllabus you prepare the syllabus and give it to them i i i don't know but it may be the case anybody yes yes so that means you have autonomy you if you say i told you no if you say you have autonomy next question you have seen how much you have given preference to the local uh, criteria and all local influence you have anything you know in the preparation of syllabus and all all, all those questions you have to answer yes sir so my question is hmm. uh, now the individual university individual hmm. colleges are having different criteria system now being at a university 
definitely the question is criteria will be different. Okay. Question is different. Okay. Question is criteria. Like yes. you have shown some seven yes. criteria in this year. So for the university, uh, there are so many faculties uh, in uh, that university. So uh, the criteria will be different or questionnaire, no, no, no. questionnaire will be different? No, no, no. Questionnaire will be same. So that, that will be enumerated we, already? No, no. We have, see, you have medical faculty, you have engineering faculty, you have the science, arts, and commerce faculties, isn't it? Yes. You have education faculty. So the questionnaires will be same for all those faculties. But answering will be different from each. While preparing SSR, he will write medical faculties like this, engineering is like this. He will answer the questions finally. But the questions will be already enumerated? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Questions are already it, it there. Will be instantly no, 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 no. It is already there. Okay. I've told you, I've shown you 139 yes. questions. Achha. They are already framed. You have to answer them. Each department but, have to answer. But, but still, sir, now in uh, medical college or medical uh, faculty, okay. they will have the different uh, curriculum activity, uh, curriculum differentiation system will be there. Like engineering is different. Okay, different. yes. No, no, no. See, I've told you syllabus autonomy. Oh. Syllabus autonomy for engineering, I will write. The syllabus is prepared by VTU. For medical, I will write syllabus is prepared by MC, MCI. And uh, for other science faculty, I will write yes, autonomy 100%. No. Yes. Okay. No, 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 it is not like that. See, generally while answering the questions, that is what we have to select. I have told you very carefully, you have to select the questions and answers. Medical autonomy, once if I ask autonomy, you are going to write number of courses. In that, I am going to omit medical. I am going to omit engineering, I will write five. Number of uh, courses, I will write below five into 100. Because, no, no, but we are going to answer based on the faculty wise. Because we have medical, we have engineering, we have other conventional subjects. So we have to answer accordingly whatever questions they ask. I cannot, see, I cannot add all the students, you know, all the faculty from medical, engineering, and other courses total put together and add all the number of students. Maybe medical faculty, we have 1,000 students. Arts and science faculty, we have only 100 students. But engineering, we may have 600 students. I cannot add total and prepare SSR for that. I have to answer the questions accordingly with faculty wise. OK, when it comes to the total, they will calculate. See, like we have many private universities, like Amity universities, we have one university in Gujarat, uh, not recollecting the name, Parul. Parul University it is A++ in Gujarat. It has, uh, I think it has around uh, 300 courses. 300 courses they are offering. How many courses we are offering? Only 30 or 40. They are offering 300. They have medical, engineering. They have all types of UG, PG programs, all types. I'm talking about publisher. Okay. Elsevier. Okay. Taylor and Francis. Right. Blackwell. Okay. Uh, Springer. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, Wiley. Mm -hmm. All those publications they come under Scopus. That's true. Many publications they come publishers. Mm -hmm. So like that there are thousands of publishers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. There are predatory journals also which they have publishers. Yes, sir. If you publish, you know your paper will be calculated based on the impact factor. Mm. The impact factor is calculated based on the criteria. Mm. Who are the people who you know, manipulate all this? It is one agency is there, Clarivate. Okay. If your journal comes under Clarivate, that is enough. Okay. Okay. If it doesn't come under Clarivate, even if you publish paper, a good paper, it is useless. Okay. Sir, second point is, one thing you have said, Sort analysis is required 
for the department also it yes, is only yes. for the institute no 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 department every department every should every have sort in then he will analyze all the departments okay, okay. thank your you, weakness strength and all for each department you should you know write okay okay another thing is sir in the preparation of curriculum for particularly engineering uh, one of the body aict has also mentioned some of the topics for a particular subject how uh, no, good it is i have you know in the, my first slide i have shown you okay some of the agencies like ict aict mci pci that pharmacy council of india okay. bar council of india we all agree with that nac agrees with them in taking the syllabus yes, from yes, their yes, uh, what prepared definitely oh, okay thank you sir thank you very much definitely all those you know agencies you can adopt okay sir thank you hello sir yes sir first of all thank you so much for giving such a informative information on the nac preparation assessment for all of us so i have a three questions sir okay uh, first of all is that uh, as we all know that we have to submit five years data for the nac so during the organization of the seminars or workshops or any of the events the geo tags are very much important geo tag photos so if at all we don't have for three years or three two years so either in substitution for that pardon me i uh, did not get your question geo tag photos so hmm. whatever event we organize so we have to take the geo tag photos and yes, yes. submit that yes so if at all we don't have the data or geo tag photos for three years no but the sanction order will be there yes sir isn't it your uh, invitations will be there you can produce them okay. the second question university will sanction uh, you know any seminar you have to take permission from university you will have one university order right yes sir yes you, you need not have to produce photos the, the second question is that the uh, in an act format there is no description of webinars the organization of webinars hmm. it is everybody sitting no on. is there you have webinars a, yes yes seminars conferences organized is there webinars yes, also yes. have value yes 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 okay Thank anything you. you know webinars conferences may physically if you have done any conference or through online offline everything it counts uh, my last question is that sir so whenever we uh, have an event hmm. so if it all we got to submit a data for to the nac what are all the documentation we have to submit like for example anything uh, for seminar particular? if it all we are so seminar that, Yeah. seminar one thing is that if you have university order one that one sponsors if you have any sponsor they will give you money they will not give you just like that they will not come and give you cash or else check like that they will issue some order isn't it yes so and so if i get if i want to collect funds i have to apply from dstr icar icssr icmr you know i have to apply i am going to organize seminar i i need I have I have so much of expenditure. I need this much amount. So the agency will sponsor the seminar. They will give an order and uh, check to you. So that itself is enough for your proof. So after uh, the I mean organization of the seminar, I mean post uh, seminar dates. So we have to submit the the brochure, the everything invitations. Everything you have to keep. Data. Everything you have to keep. brochures or number of uh, you know students uh, you know, delegates how many attended how many presented keynote address speakers all that data information you have to prepare and submit thank you so much it will be you know uh, signed by the convener so for that you know records will be there in the university if such time you, you have asked that question if they have any doubts they will come and ask the Uh, data from uh, the iqsc coordinator and whatever program we have to prepare is it mandatory that every program should be through iqsc no no not mandatory it's you not have mandatory. to give data to iqsc that's it it is not mandatory you, whatever program you conduct you prepare some uh, you know list of the thing whatever you have done give it to iqsc iqsc will maintain all the data thank you sir thank Even you sir. everything all seminars conferences webinars you know if you have attended some uh, conference if somebody have come to your department all the data you should give you have you you will invite somebody to your department one delegate one dignitary will come to your department you give the data to him there will be a question there is a question dignitary dignitary is visited to the university he will write so and so has visited botany department so and so has visited engineering department he will collect the information he will sign and upload the data 
Thank you, sir. Everything you have to keep, you, there is no waste now. Everything you have to show. And uh, when uh, that uh, NAC visit comes, you have to display all the data. Thank you, Thank you sir. A very good afternoon, sir. Yes. Uh, yes. If passing percentage is 100% every year, but the job placement is zero, then how it will affect? That is what I have told you to organize one uh, alumni association. Mm. So that alumni association, every department will have a placement cell. Okay. So those people should take responsibility to find out jobs for the students. Suppose if you are not doing that, then will that passing percentage will be considered as fake or no, 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 not fake. It, you know, if, for example, you have 40 students. All 40 students are passed out. None of them have jobs. Then it is mistake of your department. Yes. Thank you, sir. So you have to see that that is why first thing I have asked him to, uh, you know, establish one uh, alumni association in your department. Thank you. So they will take care of placements. One head will be there. One of the faculty member will be in charge of this. He will be responsible for the students. So if after 40 students, the faculty will call, invite the industries, or else he will send your uh, bio data to the industries. Either way, you can do it. Until and unless that uh, student gets placement, you have to try. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Good afternoon, sir. First of all, I want to thank you for simplifying the complexities of NAC. Uh, I want to ask, is there any provision for exchange program for you undergraduates Defin or postgraduates? Definitely, I have shown you on big slide, exchange program. You can visit uh, universities, you can call them here. That will increase the credit points. Definitely. So, sir, in medicine, in medical part, we have a district uh, rotation program for mm -hmm. postgraduates and peripheral postings for postgraduates. So can we apply for that Definitely. for credit points? Definitely. We are already yes, yes, implemented yes. those programs. Yes, yes, yes. So yes. that is already being done. Yeah, yeah. So that Whatever activity you are doing, you please give the information to the IQSC director. Oh, thank you. All information, whatever, whatever programs you have, whether it is good or bad, even if you feel it is not relevant, you please give that information. But that is one direction, sir. We are not receiving students. We are just sending students. No, no, no. Any, anybody. Oh. Anybody. Good sir. afternoon, sir. Uh, sir, with respect to students' uh, information, Who is this? This. yeah, okay. Students' information. So, say if we are collecting student information for last five years, and uh, if we are making some Google form or something like <coughs> that, what is the like what uh, essential uh, information we need to collect from them? Name of the student, uh, the program he has completed, year he has completed, percentage of marks he has passed where he is at present, which company, if he is a working in company, what type of job he is doing, what is the annual salary, his phone number, email. Okay, thank you, sir. So it is necessary on headcount basis. 40 students passed, 40 data you have to collect. Even if some of them married housewife, that information you should give. If he is not working, he is Doing agriculture on his own, that information you should give. I am doing agriculture, that is also a very good source of uh, this thing, income. I have my own farms, I do agriculture, that is, that is as good as collecting good information. On headcount basis, out of 1,700, as Madam said, 1,700 data we should have, students' data. Sir, good afternoon, sir. Uh, we have, for uh, employment creation, we created a competitive exam cell. So it is recently created, but uh, the output we, we need to see next year alone, whether no, we no. can. Yes, yes, whatever data you have created, you please give output. See, you, you might have created now. Before that, you might have been following some other procedure. Mm. See, this year you are doing this. You know, previously, how, what were you doing? No, sir. What are the methods you were adopting previously before this? No, I recently joined. I created okay. a competitive exam Good. cell for Good. net and UPSC creation. Good. So just one month before alone it started. It is going on. But output next year alone I can yes, expect. Yes, yes, yes. So whether I can include in the current yeah, yeah, NAC? Yeah. Yes. Okay, thank Definitely you, sir. you can include. Previously, before that, you know, some of you might have, you know, indirectly or directly asking the students to take up these competitive exams and you are helping in some other way. 
our university, we have our own cell, which can guide, which can give training to the students. You know, for example, preparation of UPSC, KPSC exams, yeah. we give them, give them training. Okay. Sir, one more thing, sir. For students, faculties created some of the part-time job means, sir. As of now, we do not have placement cell in existence. So how we can create data for so that? Part-time huh? job also is good. Okay. Part-time, full-time, whatever it is. Okay. You have to give the authentic data. Okay, sir. Thank you. Full-time, part-time, it doesn't matter. Uh -huh. But only they ask salary, how much, where he is working. Mm. They will not bother about full-time or part-time. Mm. Sir, uh, one more thing is that uh, uh, whether it is necessary to show to the NAC, uh, if 20 students are present, all 20 students are getting CGB higher than 8 out of 10. Definitely, it will give very good credit to you. Uh, so, but that uh, is what they are asking. How many students uh, uh, intake? How many students taken the exam? How many students qualified? Sir, that matrix is that. Uh, but logically think, sir, uh, you yourself mentioned two times, so slow learners and fast learners. This division will always go on. Yes. We cannot make everyone in the same line, OK, to get uh, nine, out, uh, uh, ten, 9 out of 10. And uh, it is not uh, possible also. No, no, it no, doesn't no. mean that how good teacher you are. And uh, one more thing is that credit should equate their knowledge okay if uh, i'm uh, credit uh, in undergraduation they are getting from other colleges 9.8 but in the first class in post graduation to one of my student if i ask uh, what is 3 plus 3 6 okay then what is 6 plus 3 uh, like if i ask means he or she is telling 10 in post graduation but in undergraduation she got 9.8 out of 10 how it is possible no, that's see, what the thing is it is all you know it happens because you know many of them those who get highest marks in puc in CET, they may get lower ranks, isn't it? It is possible. But fast learners, you have asked one very good relevant question. Fast learners and slow learners. What NAC ask you? For fast learners, what you have done? For slow learners, what you have done? To improve upon their grades. Fast learners, further improvement, what you have done? So that is what they, they will ask you. So I will discuss all these issues with the coordinator and the people the seven criteria people, they will guide you later. Even everybody, every department should have this, you know, fast learner and slow learner, uh, this uh, divisions. And you have to adopt some technique for the fast learners as well as the slow learners. That is why mentoring, I have told you, one of the criteria you can adopt. Thank you, sir. Okay. Yes, okay. We can continue the question answer session after lunch. Sure. Thank you so much, sir, for that enlightening words on uh, NAC, the protocols and criteria. A big round of applause for sir. Now we may proceed for the lunch, and we'll assemble again at 2.45 for the next training session. 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock. Thank you. Professor Omejan, sir, I take the pride to welcome you. He's the second resource person for today's workshop. Sir is professor and head of Department of Psychology in Central University of Karnataka. He has completed his bachelor's degree from Christ College, Bangalore, master's degree from University of Mysore, and doctoral degree in psychology from Bangalore University. And since 2011, he's been heading the Department of Psychology at the Central University of Karnataka. Professor Romijan sir has published more than 46 research papers in scientific journals, articles in edited books, and attended the presented scientific papers in more than 56 conferences. Sir has completed 20 years of his service so far in education, academic, and research. 12 students have been awarded doctoral degree under his guidance, and other eight students are pursuing doctoral research under his supervision. Additionally, he holds various administrative positions at Central University of Karnataka, which also includes director IQAC. He has a wealth of experience of nearly 25 years in teaching, research, training, and managing the various administrative posts. Again, I would like to add that this is little just an iceberg, what sir has achieved. A very warm welcome to you, sir. I request you to please come on the dice. Thank you. I hand over the I'd like to request Dr. S.K. Mohammad Azim, sir, Dean, Faculty of Engineering College, KBN University, to felicitate Professor Ramit John, sir, Professor and Head, Department of Psychology, Central University of Karnataka, and also the former director of IQAC.
Good afternoon. Thank you, Dr. Bashir, the director of IQSC, for introducing and talking about this program. Our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Alira Samosvi, the registrar, deans, heads of various departments and faculty members, and my old colleague, Professor Ashfaq Ahmad. I'm extremely happy to stand before you to share my experience and reflections regarding building a research profile. I'm going to spend 60 to 75 minutes talking about how you can build your research profile. I'm going to motivate you and at the same time what I have seen from my experience after some time participants may feel whether it, it is possible for me to build my research profile or it looks difficult or is it too late for me to start building my profile. All such questions may come up in your mind. You need not worry. In fact, I started building my research profile recently during the COVID period. I realized the importance of building of the research profile only in 2020. You are also not too old. It is not too late for you to start building your research profile after attending this session. So in around 2000, before the COVID, I would like to share my experience in dealing with the research profile. I tried to contact a scientist from Bangalore Department of Cognitive Science, IAC Bangalore. One of my students wanted some help from the IAC. Professor asked my name and I felt that he made a note of my name, department, and he told me, after two hours, I will get back to you. After two hours, he called me. Then I was updating my profile. I could find who visited my profile, who downloaded, who viewed my profile. I could see this professor took two hours time to check my profile, what am I doing, what is my background, my research, everything. After two hours, I could see a difference in his tone when he spoke to me. I understood he took time. If you want to make an impression about a person or if you want to check the capacity or the commitment or what exactly a person doing, you need to go through the research profile of a person. So it is necessary for all of us to build your research profile because we'll be standing before our students in the classroom. We'll be also talking to our subordinates about the importance of research publications. And we will be also interacting with our superiors, our heads, deans, registrar, vice chancellors, academy heads about the research. And if you don't have, if you don't build research profile, then probably you will be in an embarrassing situation. Because after every class, Wherever you go and deliver a lecture, if I go to Bangalore or if I go to Chennai, after delivering a talk or before delivering a talk, we can see number of people visiting my web, my profile. After this, during the, immediately after this, so the talk also people will visit. Therefore, it is very. I, I would like to say that it's very important that you have to update your personal profile and you have to also try work hard to improve your and showcase your research profile to the public. That's the purpose of this presentation. It is not only for your personal development, personal growth. This is also necessary for the institution. For example, you are working for this particular university. University is preparing for the NAC accreditation. And NAC accreditation, one of the criteria, important criteria is research and publications. If teachers do not contribute in this particular field, the institution may not get good score. And the institution also may be applying for the NIRF ranking. The institution must get good ranking because students will ask, what is the NIRF ranking of the institution? If you have good ranking, you will get good students to this institution. And if you have good ranking, you will get good fellowship. Students will get a scholarship. 
you will get a lot of fundings from the UGC and other central institutions, Canadian institutions. So, research input output is necessary and important. And there are also many ways that probably you can also improve your score. I will be talking about during my presentation. So when you talk about the research profile, we are looking at from two different angles. One is from the side of the publisher, the art, the journal, the journal publisher. We, we call journal matrix. The other one is we look at from the side, the, uh, the, from the perspective of the publisher, the researcher. So when you talk about the journal profile, we have, and for this purpose, we have to have some metrics, some calculations for comparing the quality and output of the publication. Some calculations are there, we are coming to that. And for comparing the individual publications, research, there are some calculations and some grading. That's what we call for research practice without any metrics or calculations. We cannot compare between two journals. We cannot compare between two researchers. So we have metrics for journal and metrics for individual research also. When we talk about journal metrics, there are two ways of looking at journal metrics. One is we use uh, one criteria is impact factor, other one is site score. So probably whenever you apply for funding, research project, or any other, you want to make a foreign trip, or you want to receive some small grant, they will ask you to fill up the journal details, and sometimes they will ask you that impact factor, sometimes they will ask you site score. Can anyone tell me which is superior and which is inferior among these two from this audience? Can anyone tell me? Size score is one great, but we cannot say both. I don't know whether Professor Ashwak will agree with me. And pardon? Impact factor, he agrees with impact factor, but some of our colleagues agree with the size score. I agree with them that size score. Correct. There is nothing like one is inferior, one is superior. The reason is that if you ask, there is one more uh, index of journals called in the citation index. I, it is not even listed here because we are not giving importance to in the citation index. If you put all the three, then if I am allowed to give a grading for this, I will give five marks for site score and I will give two marks for journal impact factor, web of science based, and I will give one mark for in the citation index. So this is the way we grade and we look at. So these are the two, and when you publish a paper, you must make sure that you are publishing your article in a journal which is indexed under Scopus, if not available under Scopus, you should try to do get it published in Web of Science. If these two are not there, I would say you don't publish your paper. In case your students have worked for a paper, a small paper, you don't want to disappoint. And students have learned the art of research. So it is difficult for a student to publish in these two. In such circumstances, to encourage student, you can allow him or her to publish in Indian Citation Index, which is the lowest and the least and not counted for any purpose. Instead of throwing the paper in the dustbin, you allow them to do. So now you have a mental ma mind map about how these three things are placed. And now see, for example, when students enroll for PhD, See, lot of, most, of, uh, most of the teachers or scholars, they plan their publications after submission of the thesis, after completion of the research, they will start looking for a journal. And they find, and they write a paper, then they look at the profile of the journal, then they find that this is not, my writing is not suitable for this journal. Then you have to change the complete paper. Then you find, feel that I should have, you know, 
uh, drone mode sample. I should have used the statistics. I could have included some more methods to measure, assess. All such things will come up in your mind. W when you do, you do only after completing the research. Now, I always tell my students, don't do this business. Before you choose a topic for your research, you must plan according to Scopus index. Which, which index you have to publish, your, the paper coming out from your thesis, and which journal you can use, and what is the maximum possible impact factor of the journal, what kind of write-up they expect, what kind of, what we say that the sample they expect. For example, I am from the field of psychology, psychology, okay, sociology, or public health. If you want to publish a paper, all researchers will be aspiring that their paper must be published in a Scopus index in Springer Nature. That's the highest. Now I have to look at the Spring Scopus index journal, journals which are having good impact factor. You have to be very practical, you have to be very calculative when you take such a decision. And all those who enrolled for PhD, all those who work for the project when they come to you, they have no idea. It takes some years for them to understand. So it is the responsibility of the particular faculty professor to guide and prepare them. So if I have to allow us, uh, what to say that prepare a student to choose the research topic, I will first ask my student, first you go to the list of scopus and find out which journal is suitable for you. Student will come and say, there are many journals. I don't think I'll be capable of publishing my paper in a very big journal. So for social science, the biggest journal will be Springer Nature, Journal of Humanities and Social Science, which is having around 4.5 impact factor. It's a very big impact factor for people like me. Even chemistry, physics, they all can aspire to publish medicine. They can publish in 15, 20, 25, 35 words or some journal, but it is not that easy. Then I will tell, if you are aspiring to send your paper to this particular paper, what are the requirements? They look at, for example, survey, you must have sample of at least blood sample or the human sample of around 1,000, 2,000 sample. You must have, then only the journal will accept your paper at the first round of the scrutiny. And they will also set standard measurement tools. Then you look at similar paper and find out what are the measurement tools they are using, right? And they will allow you only 4,500 4, words to 6,000 words. Some journals will allow you to, you know, give a manuscript with 15,000 words, 9,000, 8,000. So when they see that only 6,000 words is the limit, I must also mentally prepare what kind of paper I can publish. Then I will ask my students to, and all papers cannot be published as subject. They will look at the innovation, some practical applications, some novelty. Maybe after COVID, if every 10% of the adults, they experience some problems related to heart respiratory system in North Karnataka. If there is something interesting coming, then they will take your paper. If you want to conduct a general study, what is happening, they are not interested. They get thousands of papers, they reject at the first sight. You must see that your paper is accepted because, and if the journal editor will think that if I publish this fellow's paper in my journal, I will have more subscription and more citations will come to my journal. He will do all the calculations and then only he will publish it. So journal or the editor will be having his own calculations. Research supervisor will have my own calculations and I prepare my students according to these calculations. So then only the student will finalize his or her paper. Again, we have to plan. If my student is interested in doing a research in somnambulism, night walking, this is a limited area. If she does her PhD, she publishes a paper, how many peop people are going to read her paper? Maybe 500,000 people, because this is a specialized area. Only pure clinical psychologists will read. If I have to, if my student is designing a study, 
which is going to be read by medical doctors, dentists, public health, psychiatric social work, psychiatrists, psychologists, educationists. I must see that the audience who are going to read my paper and attract. So I will tell my student, you plan your study, looking at the what we say that you know the people who are experts who are going to read your article and to cite. So I had to keep all the things in my mind before I say the research, before I plan the protocol for my student's PhD work. Otherwise, you will regret once you, when the student completes the research. So what I'm trying to do, you have to look at in a reverse way now, rather than looking directly into going ahead with the research with whatever you want, then you find that your research output is not useful, nobody will accept, and even if they publish, and then there will not be any citation, then after some years you will regret for conducting such studies and publishing such papers. So these are the two major international journal metrics and we will choose Scopus first and journal but okay, Web of Science as the second one before we publish the paper. So when we calculate the impact factor, we use the word impact factor, how do we calculate the impact factor? For example, yes, it's a very simple thing. When someone asks you all of a sudden when you face an interview, they will ask how to calculate the impact factor all of a sudden you should not be shocked for the people, right? So for example, past two years, the pub okay, you have published some articles in 2013, uh, 2012, you have published 486 and 2013, 285 and total for the past two years, you have published 771 articles. And the, two, the subsequent year, that's the next year, for example, now it is 2023, 2020 and 21 number of articles published and based on those articles, how many citations have come in the next year, that is 2030. If you calculate, you will get it. So past two years, 771 articles and citations are 127 this year, based on the last two years. The calculation you will get is 0 0.07. This is the way we calculate the impact factor of the journal. And when you look at the Scopus index, the difference is they now for the web of science, they calculate for two years, but Scopus, they calculate for three years. That is the only difference between uh, size score and the impact factor. So this is the comparison. You can find that size score, past three years publications, divided by the papers cited in the current year, 2015, and impact factor past two years, publications divided by the papers published this year. One is three, one is two. That is the only difference between these, but there are few more differences also between these two. And the, what are the differences between size score and impact factor? Size score based on the Scopus database rather than Web of Science. Number two, size score uses three year citations, whereas impact factor uses two year citations window. The size score includes all content published in the journal. For example, in a journal, there are not especially journals published in the field of medicine and engineering and social sciences. Other than the empirical studies, there are many different types of articles or reviews are there. They are all included. But in fact, factor, only articles are reviews published. Sometimes now we find that the videos also, small videos also come in the form of publications. They all are taken under size score. And size score covers all subject areas where impact factor is only available for journal index in the SEI and FSI. So that's the difference between these two. Now we call for uh, five year impact factor. Sometimes people will ask this is the new trend. So we will calculate for example, so this is the formula is number of citations in one year, that is present year, to the content published in the journal for the past 
five years during the past years divided by the total, total number of articles published. So there you saw two years and three years. Instead of that, we calculate for the five years now. So this is the new terminology we use okay. these days. And if you want to find out the journal, Web of Science, you can click on this. And for the scopus, you can click on this, visit the site, and see the journals are placed year-wise with the impact factor, and then scroll down and study. Spend hours together to study. For example, if your area is mechanical engineering, you must see, type the subject, and then see. For example, sometimes you go for exclusive subject, you may not get much visibility for such papers. So if you go for interdisciplinary subjects, then what happens? There are more chances for people from other allied areas to cite your articles. And, and in the, what to say, as a result of it, in future you will get more score, what the citations. So these are the two. We are, we are speaking about the journal, how we measure, how you, how, how do we rate journal. Now we are looking at how we are going to evaluate an author. Basically we look at the citations, number of citations you have. If you have 100, 200, 300, 400 citations, you can evaluate it. Then we have two more interest, important things. One is called <coughs> H index, other one is I10 index. When people go for interview, when they apply for job or scholarship or, for example, especially for research programs in abroad or collaborations, then they will ask you to fill up your citations based on Google Scholar, Google Scholar profile. There you need to write your citations, your H index, your I index, and they may also ask you to share your research gate. Then these things becomes very important for you. You cannot create all the things all of a sudden in the night, but those who have not updated their data, they can still do it and they can make their visibility more if they start working now. So this is the water impact factor. I will show you a sample for you to understand. Okay, this is a sample to understand. Uh, this is from this is my Google uh, Scholar profile. Maybe most of you may be having this profile. This is like our LinkedIn or Facebook profile. I don't have much publications or much things to put it here and compared to many other scholars in my field or in other related field. Here we can find the citations. It is as on today, it is 289 citations. And I have H index 9 and I10, I10 index 9. So how to find out, for example, if the first paper is cited by someone today, within a few minutes, my citations will become 40, 47. So this number keeps increasing. So my, I have to see before I send a pub paper for publication, and I should see that I must get some good citation for my paper. If I'm not getting good citation, why should I do all the things? Why should I publish it? I have to keep that in mind. So this is arranged according to the number of citations in the descending order. When you have, for example, I have H index 9. That means I have nine papers published and the ninth paper has that index what we say that citation is more than nine that's a simple logic to understand i can just you can just count it here 46 one two three it comes down eight up to 15 it is covered from 15 if you count here there are nine papers and their citations more than nine if this becomes 10 my h index will become 10. So the more the citations I get from the lower level, and then my H index will go high. 
So that is the calculation. And how do we understand what is that I-10 index? When you have an article with more than 10 citations, we call I-10 index is one. When you have five articles, and each article has more than 10 citations, then you will get five I-10 index. You can see the right side top I-10 index. So I have nine articles published, and those nine articles are having index more than 10. So that is the calculation. So these are the simple basic things you should remember. Citations must be high, and H index also must increase. Then you can talk to people, people will, and then I-10 index also must be, will naturally go up. And there are a few more things which uh, before you plan your research, you must remember. See, the highest citation is 46, right? And some people, they have citations around 1,000. When you look at, you find out of 1,000, they got 750 for a single paper with a citation. It is just like a lottery for them. 750 or even 900 of one paper, they get citation. Why? What's the reason? It is useful. People are reading. People are citing the article. Because of 750, if you get, it's not a small thing. I have seen many people look at the score when they find 500, 250, 800, even 1,500 with a single paper. Why? Those papers are quite popular. So if you are a faculty, or a scholar, when you publish a paper, you have to keep in your mind, my paper must be referred by people from different fields, and I must get at least within four, five years, at least 100, 200 citations for the paper. Otherwise, all effort, see, like donkeys, like, you know, you are going on, doing, doing work, but at the end, you don't get any reward. That should not happen to you. So I keep on checking the profile of the people, and I find that people, okay, smart people, they publish few papers, but their papers are cited by. For example, in the field of psychology, if I develop a particular concept, for example, stress management, that stress management will be cited by people from the field of education, people from the field of public health, psychiatrists, general medicine, journalists, many people will. So if I publish a paper, my citations can go 1,000 or 2,000 within four, five, 10 years. So I must be very practical very calculative when I plan my research. Then when it comes down, I will show you, see 46 is not a big number compared to many people in the field. See coming down up to here, see the impact factor is three. See two, one, one. See now when I look at this one, two, I really curse myself. I really feel bad because no one told me, no one prepared, and you know, told me, you should not have sent to your paper to this journal, correct? You should not have, not have taken up a topic like this for research. Who wants to refer your paper? Who wants to cite your paper? So it is quite natural that you, uh, your citations will never increase more than one or two. It's a wasting of time and time and energy. Don't spend your time and energy by writing papers and publishing, you will get one and two, one and two, correct? When I look at it. So instead of that, you publish three, four good papers, and these five papers will be sufficient for you to increase your visibility in the future. At least I got one paper with uh, one here, published in 2016. And when I come down, correct, all the papers, see? No citation, see? Why did I do so many years of research and all? Correct? Correct. I think all of you have got the answer for this. Am I right? So when you do the research, and after some years when you look back, you find that you have wasted your time and energy and without any good visibility. So, you must, now you are starting your career, most of you, now it has come 
the university has come to the stage of university. Now you have to decide and plan your research. And that one which is with the star is indicating the article with the book. Books are always indicated with a star. That's why one paper with a 15 is with a star. That's the indication. And this is about the star paper. Again, you also have not necessary that you should get citations with a high profile article. You can also upload your old because I need some time, maybe probably if I can get a copy of my old papers and I upload it, there are chances for some people to cite my article also. I don't suggest you to upload it in the form of a scanned copy because when people are doing the search in the net, they are gathering the information. If it is in the Word document, it is easy for them, the sentence or paragraph to copy it and cite future. So whatever papers you have published in the past, they are not visible, they are not published in a good journal, still there is a scope for you to scan it or type it, edit it and upload here. This is one thing. And if you have published, you have presented a paper in a seminar, do that. Your students have done a dissertation, it is not published there. So try to upload as many number of articles and papers, that is your first job. Nobody knows who is going to refer. For example, you have, you, have, you are guiding students every year, 10 to 15 students for dissertation. Some of the students, the coming years will be citing the articles of the dissertations of your their senior students. In that case also, you may get some additional. So manuscript, database, whatever you have, you must start working from today. So what happens when you start creating this is, very easy for you to do this. It is just like opening a Facebook account or LinkedIn account. So you just need to upload your photo, your personal information, your institution's name, mobile, ID, mobile number, email ID, all the things. You can just open a Google account and then upload. There is a place for you to title of the article, volume number, page number, year of publication, abstract, then the full paper you can just upload so that all the papers will appear here. It's a simple job. If you spend one or two hours, you will be able to to upload the paper here, like this. And when you search in the Google, you can see this paper coming up like this. So this is about Pardon? If, uh, John, yeah. if uh, anybody publishes paper in any of these Scopus Index journals, ah. they need not have to upload. It will come as, as ah, it is ah, yes, on correct. its own. Correct. So if anything you know, other than that book sandal, if you publish, then you can upload it. Yes, because you will be creating an ORC ID through the ORCID only, you can publish in the web of science or scopus. Yeah, ORCID Automatically, yes. they will take your papers, but it will take some time, it looks. And right. also, and also the papers published in Elsevier, huh. it has copyright issues, you cannot directly upload it. Yes, correct. So if you are publishing, uh, there is also a question whether you should publish in an open source or closed. This is a very important question what usually research scholars will be asking you. What is the difference between open source and closed, paid? Paid open source, once you give the article, it is available on the website and anybody can, and it will be visible for anyone to read and cite immediately. So that's the called open source. And closed one is the pay, okay, closed one, no, sorry. And open source, they don't get any income. They charge APC, academic processing charge, they will charge. For example, if you are sending, uh, so since they are get collecting academic processing charge, maintenance of the website, review, editing, everything, so they charge a good amount. So it is available free of cost for the public. Otherwise, if it is closed, what they will do? How much? Do free of cost. How much do they charge? You please tell them. Uh, it will be uh, one two thousand dollars. Ah uh, yes, thousand. Two thousand dollars. Yes. One thousand seven fifty dollars. Yes, sir. It comes. 
but it's from India, Asia, Asia, you can make a request to one round, two round, three yes, rounds, yes. and they will sometimes give full wave of that one. But you have to justify yeah. why you need to get a discount. Because you cannot compare the payment with a US dollar, right? When you approach them, they will give. But if it is a free available, of, okay, what you say that if it's a closed, then they will not charge it as a free of cost, they will publish the paper. But to run their business, they need to. So there are less chance for people to publish when it is not available to the public at free of cost. So when you put so much of effort, I would suggest that you should send it only in open source, even if you pay some APC. If it is a closed, people cannot see the full article. People can see the abstract. And to see the full article, they have to take the membership or they have to pay the money and get the article. Then how will you get citations? This is the answer for this question. So I would suggest that you go for this free. And Google Scholar is the first one, which is common. And parallel to that, ResearchGate is the other second one. So here, what you should do, you have to also create an account here like this, ResearchGate, like creating Google Scholar. And all your papers, you can upload it as and when you publish it with the ORC ID, automatically all the papers will be taken here. And the difference between the, okay, I will just show you the features of this. Here we have, earlier we research interest score. Earlier there was a score called RG score. People usually used to hike the RG score, research gate score. Now from June, I think uh, recently, uh, last June or from December, they canceled that RG score concept and they, now they are taking only research interest score. Here you have research interest score. I will tell you the formula later. Then citations 151, H index 6. So here, if you upload your papers, automatically all the citations will be captured here and your H index will be created here. And here you can also include your monograph, your research data, dissertation, seminar paper presentation, classroom presentation, whatever, where it is your property, not copied by anyone, then you can upload. So when you upload all the things, and in addition to that, here there is a scope for you to interact with other scholars. You can ask questions, you can ask them to share their document, you can have some discussion, you can also notify, it is like, like a Facebook. So the more interactions, pe people, more number of people viewing your article, more number of people downloading your article, more number of people sharing, all the things are counted. When such things, activities are happening more related to your research area, then your RI score will increase. If your RI score is in not increasing, that means you are not an important researcher, your contributions are not generally welcomed and accepted. More than that, there is another advantage of this uh, research gate. Every day you can see, for example, when you register for your, when you register your name for this research gate, you will write, these are your, what you said, that your personal interest area. Like for example, child psychology, forensic psychology, social psychology, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Depending upon the research interest area, when articles are published by people from different parts of the world, it will appear just like a newspaper in your profile. So you will get to know what exactly is happening in your field of research every day morning. You need not go and search in the Google or any index to find out it. So I always suggest my students to take a membership in ResearchGate compulsorily, those who are doing dissertation or any project. The advantage is that once they type their area, they will get to know what is happening in the field without much effort every day. And number two, when you see the pe pe people who are, for example, I can see at least five to 10 people are following me. Here there is an option for you to follow the people. They are following me. After some time, they will send a mail to me and used to send, discuss their research plan with me and they invite for their conference, paper presentation, etc. You develop a kind of a social networking with the people like us, you do it, LinkedIn. This is the other advantage of the research gate. But such advantages are not there in Google, Google profile. You don't get that one. 
So research gate is having such advantages. And you should also, you must also always try to see how you can increase your research interest gate. So here, see people who are following me, all the lists are there, and people who are what we are sending, people are sending a message, correct, people who are sending the request, so you can see all the things from this. And these are the research articles which are available for the people to see it and review. So you'll get the statistics quite often, how many people are watching, reading your article, downloading, citations, recommendations, full test, reads, everything you can see from this, okay, from this graph periodically. So this is the second one. So I would suggest all those who have not made an attempt to create this may take the help of maybe some research scholars young. They are very good in doing the work in the computer for your own children and create your profile with your photo first. After that, you should start looking at the people whom you know working in the same field in different universities, colleges, and profession and see what is happening to them. Then you, st you must look at your papers, then start uploading your papers here. Then gradually, after two, three, four days, you will see your visibility gradually increasing. Then you will find people who are following you. You will start following people who are working. Within 20 to 30 days, you will get into the mainstream track. You will be connected to the people, and every day you will spend at least morning you get up, you will see your, what is your score, how many people have cited your paper. The moment you start becoming sensitive and aware about the citations of the paper, then you will look for a good paper for, you know, to get published. So these are the two important things which you can plan. Apart from these two, we have other, one more called Academia. How many of you are in academia in this group hall? Could you please raise the hand? Yes, one, two, three, four. Yes, five, six, seven, eight. What are the seven, eight? What is one thing special about academia? Can anyone tell me? One thing special about academia? Pardon? Open source. Then, academy is a publicity, ma pu publicity master. Once your paper is uploaded in the academia, you will find number of people going on, reading, and once somebody is reading the article, it will appear there. Once somebody is only viewing the article, it will be visible for you. Once the paper is downloaded, it is visible. So academia also will give you more visibility. If you don't have visibility, then you will never get a good score. So academia is the third source I would suggest to you. After Google Scholar, after ResearchGate, Academia is, you can do. Academy also, you can include student presentation work also, and conference seminar details and other things. And I don't think Google Scholar and ResearchGate will give you that much. I have seen people with one paper or two paper, they are getting much publicity and visibility about the paper. So this is the third source I would suggest to you. And the fourth source is, based on web of science, correct. This is ba done by Clary Wade. This is also web of science. Sometimes some people will ask you to give only your web of science profile. And from this profile itself, you can generate your CV. There will be, because I have not signed in using my account. This is something visible for the public. So even Google Scholar, you can generate your ID from ResearchGate. You can generate your ID. With one, you can generate your ID. And from Web of Science also. Web of Science is also equally important. If I ask you professionally, which is more important, 
paper science and scopus that have okay, profiling is more important than research gate and google scholar because when you apply for grant fund they will ask you to they will ask you what is your fill up fill the fill your uh, professional profile based on web of science so what is your h index what is your publication citations all the numbers are very important so all of you must from this institution must start registering for this probably you may get score one doesn't matter but in the course of the time when one becomes two two becomes three four five you will also feel happy and satisfied with uh, your progress this is one then one more important thing side in please scopus id and uh, scopus id whether uh, see citations documents h index for because you can see the difference in web of science is 6 and scopus is 4 because scopus index is limited by only top class publications they will take it so they will also ask your web of science now for the NAC also profile they are asking the individuals they have to calculate your h index i index because nowadays they don't ask you to give the title publication year date and all they don't want that why for an arf they don't ask you to give the list of articles they don't want they will directly take from the institution and institutions also must register for one account for this. And institutional account with the, you can also see from KBN University how many articles are published, Web of Science Index, what is the impact factor, what is the citation. You will get a total score from the institution. Web of Science and Scopus Index also you will get it. So this is also very important for you. So it is must that all of you will have Scopus Index based, Web of Science Index based, Research Gate and the Google Scholar, then Academia for your publicity, and you must start opening up the accounts. You need not to spend money for this. They are all freely available, but with the motivation, you have to create this account and monitor and check what is happening around you. And within, as I told you, within one or two months, you will find the difference in your career. And I do not know whether you have something like we have University has got an account profile like this. All universities, they have their own library maintenance. I do not know whether your university has this profile. Uh, if your university is not having, this is very important for you. And this profile and Vidwan profile, both are Vidwan profile, both are 100% same. So you have to immediately start to doing this work. And once you have an account here created, this is by the university, the rest of the things are will be interconnected through the ORC ID. You will get everything, you know, getting up the information, getting updated. This is done for the Central University of Karnataka. The basic features are there. Correct, once you uh, create your profile, you will have your research projects. Everything will be up uploaded. Then membership in committees. For publication. If you have not opened from my account, personal account, you can see. All. And here also you have an option. See, ORCID, here you can see. And Scopus also, it is connected. Researcher ID also, that is based on Web of Science, Google Scholar. They are all interconnected. So from a single source, from the university, your institution's profile, you can see what is happening. And uh, this is the total for the university. The university also will be placing the departments in terms of the publications. So if you want immediately, you want to take the profile of the university, one click, you will get the printout of this. 
So what happens, each department is placed here and with a different color. And when you have, see, the green color indicates publications, number of publications, because this is not updated by the staff. You must make sure that every month before 30th, all teachers will update their data and there must be some common mechanisms in the university where when teacher is attending a seminar, that certificate must be, when the files process through the IQAC, IQ, one copy for IQAC must be taken and kept there. When you are signing, for example, uh, pr published paper, published paper copy will be, one copy will be collected, stored in the IQAC immediately. Otherwise, what happens when you want to start for the next preparation, it's a very big, difficult task for you to collect the papers. Somebody is delivering a talk, and after that, ask the faculty to collect the certificate and deposit into IQAC, then only clear the one an ODU or some kind of a system should be there so that otherwise you will suffer by spending time looking for, digging for the documents. And this is what is happening in most of the institutions. If you want to see number of publications in the institutions and number of citations, number of post reference, number of H index, you can see. You can see. And this is the profile which university administration must be looking weekly wise, monthly wise, and there should be IQAC must have monthly meeting to look at why the curve is not coming up for some departments, why there is no progress, why there is no growth, unless and until and motivate them, give them some incentives, otherwise what will happen when you have to go for NAC, it will be very difficult. Professor Ashfaq knows, right? He was the first IQAC director here. He prepared all the documents and left the university. So my job was easy for me to go for the NAC accreditation. In the first phase, it was difficult. Now it is becoming much more difficult now. So this institutional profile can be created by the IQAC immediately. So now I have introduced major systems like Web of Science, Scopus Index, Google Scholar, ResearchGate, Academia, and there are many more other profiles which may be probably in the course of the time related to your own subject and specific field, you can find out it. I also have a list related to my field so that your visibility will gradually increase. And this is the way the H index is calculated, which I have shown here. And as I told you, the RG score is removed and the research interest score is being referred these days. Now, anybody in this hall is not having ORC ID? Could you please raise the hand, ORC ID? Not having? Yes, one, two, okay, okay, yes, three, four, five people. Okay, right, maybe at least, okay, at least, uh, uh, five to ten people are not having the ORC ID. All those who have the ORC ID, they created the ORC ID, they know. This is just like your Aadhaar card. If you have Aadhaar card only, you can open account in the bank, you can transfer the money, you can get gas connection, you can do whatever you want. And it's a very simple job for you to create uh, ORC ID, you can just uh, This is my ORC ID account, correct? You can type the word, which is as simple as creating a Facebook account. You can type your address, email, ID, everything, and you will create an ORC ID. Once you create an ORC ID, all your publications will be screened and taken, packed, what we say, that gathered by the ORC ID, and they put, they put all the things together, and you can easily have access to all the articles. Sometimes they will ask your ORC ID. They will not ask you to give a list of your 10 or 15 publications, asking you to take a printout, attach a copy, or else. just give your ORC ID. They will easily find out how many publications you have. So all those who don't have ORC ID, maybe today is March, May 31st, June 1st will be the first day 
for all people to have their ORC ID, Aadhaar card ID, and you can do it at home. This is the first step for you. Then second one is Web of Science, as I have already shown, how to create. And then when you are publishing papers, always remember, sometimes we find some publishers available locally, available, and uh, even, uh, you know, even Gulbarka also, you can get it published. In some universities, some teachers have their own publish publications in their family name. So you should not go for publishing in such whatever <coughs> book house. You must select a few things which are <coughs> quite popular and follow, used by researchers, Rutledge, Elsevier, Peter Lang, Tyler and Francis, Sage Group, okay, Silco, Cambridge University, Wiley. So when you want to publish a paper or you want to publish articles, you try to look at its top 10 indexes. If you publish such what we say that journals or the book house, only then your papers will have much visibility. For example, if you publish uh, what we say that a journal or a book from somewhere in Solapur or Gulbarga or any place, it will not reach the world. Many people will not refer or to have access to those papers or the books. So you must be very serious about uh, selecting the, those books and if you need some information about good publishers, Dr. Ashwat will be the first person to take the help. Then Google Scholar Citation Profile, which I have already shown you. I will share the uh, profile with you. Then Research Gate. Then I didn't talk about the LinkedIn because LinkedIn is co a common. I think most of you are, if I ask you how many of you are not members of LinkedIn, I don't, maybe you may find only one or two members. What is the advantage of uh, uh, being in uh, LinkedIn? Can anyone tell me? Pardon? Networking, internship, conference, membership, what is seminar, project announcement, funding, fellowship, all the things. When you publish a paper, you must put it in your LinkedIn also. See that it is visible to the people. So then what happened? At least one or two citations will come out of that. So those who don't have account in LinkedIn, they can. Anybody is a member in Mentally? Anybody in this class, in this room? Mentally? Yes. Can you tell me the importance of Mentally, the advantages of Mentally? So to, uh, yes, right. So I have not used, but I'm sure that many scholars, they have uh, taken membership in Mentally. I have not opened it here. All of you must experiment it with Mentally. That's also a good source like LinkedIn to have database sharing. I'm talking about the Scopus, and this is the advantage of the Scopus, which is, it covers Seventy-one million items with 1.4 billion references, and it's a multidisciplinary. Sometimes people will ask, "Yes, Scopus is only for pure science or anything?" No, for humanities, social sciences, languages also they have respective journals published. And you must also keep watching that. For example, in the field of psychology, and the topmost what we aspire is Springer Nature, and. Now, in 2020, they, I think, okay, 23 or 24, I think we are expecting a separate journal for psychology. We will not find. And if you are working in the field of a particular subject, you may not find a journal exclusive with the title of your subject. But you can pub get your article published in a journal related to science, engineering, technology, or such sources. This is the background of uh, Scopus. when you open, you will find this is a web page. And Web of Science, it has got 100 million items with uh, references of 1.4 billion. And it is with the institution subscription only, you have to pay institution. But I don't suggest that uh, the institution must invest so much money for this. 
And it was earlier known as Thomson Ruby Threads, those who know. It looks like this. Then PubMed, all of you are from the medical field, especially medical, social science, humanities, they also, biological sciences, they use. This has got 30 million items with the references with the multi medicine, biological sciences. They are will be referring PubMed. Then those who are in the education related to psychology or social sciences, they can use the ERIC database, which will have about the schools, colleges, related studies will be there in the ERIC databases you can have. So it looks like this. Then IEEE for the engineering science subjects, they can have a look at this for especially from the electronic engineers, electrical and electrical engineers. They use that IEEE explore. It looks like this. Then Science Direct, that is also around 16 million items are there, multidisciplinary by Elsevier. It looks like this. Then DOJ, okay, that, okay. Okay, Directory of Open Access Journal, DOJ. This is also multidisciplinary. And the gesture, this is also multidisciplinary so database source. Then the last one comes to the UGC care list. I hope all of you know about UGC care list. Am I right? If you don't get anywhere, Scopus or Web of Science or anything, for your promotion, for any other thing, you can go for UGC care list. But a uh, uh, disadvantage of getting the UGC care list is like you apply for something today and tomorrow morning your journal will not be there in the list. And there are also many paid journals in the UGC care list we find. So it is always better we go for Web of Science and Scopus. Of and if you don't get anywhere published, instead of throwing the data into the dustbin, then you can go and get it published in UGC care list. This is the last list. And by default, Web of Science and uh, Scopus indexed journals are also listed in this, except a few which they have notified already. It looks like this. Now the last one is Indian Citation Index. Correct? It's an online for the journals published from India exclusively and cited. This is also okay for the beginners or the students. It looks like this. You can also take a membership and you can also browse and this is with one, this is this is said by the government of India, all teachers must take membership. If your profile is there in Vidwan, then only people may contact you. They want to contact an expert in the field of medicine, engineering, technology, humanities. They look at your profile and they will invite you for conducting the interview, selection board, project management, all other academic. So that if teachers are not connected to the other institutions, this institution will not grow. So you must up, okay, update your profile in the Vidwan also. And Vidwan's profile and the institution's profile will be almost 100% the same. It looks like. Then pop loans. There is a concept called you now people use the all matrix to see.
called, uh, this is the uh, entirely new concept called alt matrix. Here you can see with uh, different colors the round. And different colors are denoting different. For example, uh, you can see at the bottom an example here. See, 11 articles you can see here. 11 are published in blocks. So it has got yellow color. Then Wikipedia, it is cited in one color. Right. And then Twitter, it is with the light blue. Then Facebook, it is like this, Google users. So when your articles are cited, mentioned in such social media, don't think it is not necessary that then I should put it in the LinkedIn, I should not put it in Facebook also is important. You can also put up your article in the Facebook. If someone is citing your article, okay, mentioning about your article after referring to this one, you will get a point. And that color will appear. The more color, the, and if your article is read by many people in different different social media, you will get a almetric with a different color with a beautiful shape. So looking at the almetrix and color intensity, you will be, you know, we will make a, what we say that observation or, or create an obs opinion about a person's research like this one. This is the new trend in research. This you will not find with the most of these traditional, uh, what we say, social network systems, but we can find institution network system has got this almetric facility here. That's all about the research profiling. What time we have to stop? Close. Eh? Yes. Now, I have completed my presentation on uh, research profiling. In conclusion, I would say that, number one, all of you are going to create your uh, ORC ID tomorrow. Number two, institution must create institutional profiling system. We should go on par with the with one you, you, that UGC is with one. Number two, you, you, university must create. And number three, all teachers must open their account, create an account for ResearchGate, Google Scholar, Academic, and Web of Science, and Scopus. Minimum these five social network they have to create. Plus, it is always good if you can publicize your work through Facebook or LinkedIn. Correct. This five is must for all the teachers. After creating, then you can, it will be automatically connected to the institution's website. And then your articles will be collected. And it will be updated. Then institution also must have a policy of reviewing the progress of the publications at least minimum once in a month. Otherwise, and there must be also some incentives or some kind of a encouragement for the teachers who are coming up with the publishing. There must be some encouragement for the teachers who are coming up with the publishing articles in index above at least 0.5 onward. You must 0.5 to 1, 1 to 1.5, like that one small incentives or encouragement must be given. And if an article needs to be published in a very good journal with the institution's ID, institution also must support the faculty with the, support, with the percentage of APC academic processing charge. With all this support, I'm sure that within six months, the institution can gradually build up a profile, and within one year, these institutions will have very good research profile. So that's all I would like to uh, share with you. Maybe probably uh, my guru, Dr. Ashfaq, is here. If I have missed anything important point here, I think I invite Dr. Ashfaq to uh, complete. Pardon? Publication. When they ask good papers, their institutions can have a policy to support them. The only thing, you know, money if uh, 1750 dollars if 10 people publish paper and if institute gives them money huh. what will happen to the institution 
see there are publications, they can do open source uh, publication with money. Without publication, there is another option in journal called subscription. Mm. It is free of charge, but publicity will not be as good as open source. You must go for publicity, open source. No, that money, who will pay money, $2,000? It you is almost 2 lakh rupees. Yes, if the institution is getting, why not institution encourage? No, institution, even IASC will not encourage this type of publications. Because each public, each uh, author, if he published four or five papers per year, hmm. each you know, give two lakh dollars, two lakh rupees per paper. Five papers, it will be ten thousand rupees. Sorry, ten lakh rupees. So, people should go for subscription, and like you said, put them in uh, Google Scholar, ResearchGate, and all. You, they will get definitely publicity. Anyway, when the paper is accepted for yes. publication, when it reaches number of applications received from yeah, the institution, yeah, that, definitely. that time the institution can take a decision. Yes. Let us not uh, right now say no. we will not support or we will not give or No, anything. our vice chancellor uh, is here. No, he agrees. Something, something comes up. No, you can put one uh, rider, uh. those with impact factor more than five, uh. such type of people can be encouraged by uh. university. Uh. Yes. So not less than five. Not less than five. Yes. yes. If you get a paper more than five, definitely. Definitely institution, university. Institution. Yes, yes. And if it's a small also, some small encouragement also can be no, given. No, small, small also it is $2,000. More than five also is $2,000. For everything. That is the publication charge. Anyway, that as and when it comes, the institution may look, yes. look into that one. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Good evening, Professor. Yes, yes good evening. I am Dr. Hina Mubin from Department of Zoology of Faculty of Sciences. Yes. So as the discussion is going on regarding the publication charges, I would like to highlight a point that it is not mandated that the journal which is offering open access, that author should bear the APC charges. It is not a mandate for all the journals. There are few journals which will have sponsors with them. So they will sponsor your uh, paper for open access, the one thing, sir. And my question is regarding the journal who is, who is not offering open access. Neither the sponsor, neither the author is able to bear that. But still we want to publish in a good journal. We will do as I am one of the person who has done that. And uh, my question is the journals which are not offering open access, but the person who is referring my research, they can access my article through a pirated website called as Sci-Hub, where they can refer my paper, they can download. And I think so they have even cited at that. But that citation is not reflected in any of my uh, social uh, profile, I can say. So whether that citations are counted, which has been downloaded from the pirated website or not, that's my question, sir. I think you should go only when it can be cited by other people. Correct, which I'm not aware about. See, sir, actually, I am having ResearchGate ID, ORC ID, whatever you have mentioned, few yes. of the IDs I'm having, yes. I have made my articles as an open, means I have uploaded them. No, but there is a condition when you are publishing a paper, yes, if it's yes. a closed, not yes. very open, yes, they yes, will yes. tell you how many years you can hold it. Yes, yes, sir. And sometimes at personal level, you can share it with all request. Yes, so yes, sir. I am also getting the request. Okay. So some articles which are not available, I, I am allowed to share the article fully with the person. Yes, sir. After seeing that one. But when it's open, people will see the entire article. Yes, sir. That's advantage. So, and depending upon the contract you are going to make with the publisher and yes, the sir. period. After, there is some particular period after that, they cannot stop it. It will, you, you can upload it in your research gate profile also. Okay, sir. But ultimately, you should see that your paper must reach as many number of people possible. Yes, okay. okay. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. And as you said, not all people insist that APC, they will insist, ask for APC, but they will come down and uh, they, will, they will also negotiate with you. Yeah, right. and what I have observed, sir, before yes. COVID time, the things for publication was different. Like most of the journals were having sponsors, they have offered without APC charges, they have accepted. It includes elsewhere and Springer Nature also, okay. which I have experienced. Yes. But after the COVID, the same publishers or same journals are again attracting APC charges from the author themselves, sir. So this uh, situation has worsened the researchers who are interested to publish their research. And uh, one more thing, what uh, Syed Ash uh, Ashfaq sir has highlighted that it bears like $2,000 and all. It is really a very hefty amount for a researcher to bear from a developing country, sir. No, you so can request them, you can ask them, you can tell them about your 
when yeah. some of my students also had the problem. Yes, yes, yes. And sir. when they hear what the scholarship they are getting, 8,000 rupees is a scholarship. Yes. Correct? The salary. They are unemployed after completing the thesis. Many of my students got 100% wave off or 75%, 80% wave off they have given. Yes. Rarely they insisted that they will not come down. Then we can send to the next journal. Yes, sir. Correct. Where they can, what we say that, relax that ATC charge. Okay, sir. Once let the paper be ready, paper be accepted for publication. Yes. yes. Then you can bargain with them. Then you can ask your institution to give a share. Okay. okay. All your contributors can also put together. See that the paper gets published. Then. Okay, sir. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Any other question or comment? Thousand? Thirty. One thousand thirty. Okay. Give Sorry. a big hand to him. Yes, yes, yes. Correct. And uh, H index is nineteen. Hmm. I ten index is twenty nine. Okay, good. So uh, nearly I have published fifty papers. Okay. And in one year after joining to KBN University, I have published ten paper, six book chapter I have communicated. Okay. Actually, I was working in China, in Sanderson University for three years. Okay. Okay, based on that, I can say that here, actually what will happen means, uh, there for the uh, BSc student, hmm. they will not take theory classes. Okay. They will provide the books. If one student is uh, TCM background, six months he will go to the chemistry laboratory, he will learn the things. Theory part, okay, uh, he will take care of himself only. Now here, what will happen is, uh, we want to do the research, but along with academy activity, say for example theory, practical, all the things, so it is getting little difficult and along with there is no having, uh, you know, the proper facility also. For that we need to start building up the facility, infrastructure first, then only then we can achieve the thing. Otherwise, what will happen is, in one year, I have published 10, next year, zero, because of extra work of this theory, practical, all those things, so research cannot be go ahead. I, I know along with that. In China, if first author has published impact factor more than five, they will provide 20,000 rupees, Indian rupees, for motivation, so that that author can work so hard, so that he, he can publish more than five impact factor and go. And there will be a remark of self-citation also. Yeah. Yeah, we will not do that self-citation. Whatever the citation will come from there, different people only. Then will be, okay. then it will be valid only. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your observation. Yes. And uh, we should have faculty like you, many more in the university, so that institutions' profile also will grow. But one observation I have made, I have gone to big institutions, they have called air condition, faculty, room, facilities, computer technology and everything. And I have gone to universities where they have only broken chair, plastic chairs and all. And I found such institutions also, people are doing research, people are publishing articles with a high impact factor. That institution, for example, there are students who are from Annamara University, Bhopal University with the correspondence course, they have come. They have become good researchers, they have published. I think the institution is not a matter, facilities are not a matter, that motivation, that enthusiasm, spirit for research, that is very important for us. And at the same time, institution must encourage people who can uh, do good research. And I know that system is different in China. They have master's degree program, they have one semester class, rest, they will do practice and they will do only the dissertation and they will get their master's degree. Correct? Uh, and if you have good students, you can allow them to go and study by themselves. But in our Indian scenario, we get students from all kinds of category. Correct? Less motivated, highly motivated, independent learners. But we cannot have such practices in India. If you allow them to go for self-study, no one will clear the exam, what you say, that the complete the course successfully. Correct? So you can also experiment on this. Okay, thank you. Any other question? Good evening, sir. Uh, myself, Dr. Badrinath from Biotechnology Department. Uh, my point is that, sir, uh, some journals are common in uh, Scopus and Web of Science. Okay. So when we go for calculation of bibliometrics, mm. uh, which one to uh, like, uh, select, sir? Because if it is common in both Scopus and Web of Science, okay. 
which uh, citations uh, like should we consider no see if they are asking specifically based on web of science then you give that separately yes sir then if they are asking for the scopus you give that separately yes and sir. when you have to when they are not asking you Common are, you thing. write both separately okay correct we i do not know technically how this scoring okay that okay, overlapping sir. can be controlled because it is taken care by the software okay sir i am not sure about it okay sir okay, thank, you. thank you sir good evening sir ah yes sir uh, myself uh, dr vishal dat i have uh, two questions yes uh, we talked about uh, publication in research yes being a university faculties would you recommend us to publish paper on teaching and learning process two papers i done it teaching, teaching, and teaching and learning process okay papers on that one yes what is your background professor uh, yes. i am a mechanical engineer mechanical engineer yes if that paper can be published in your discipline that is also a, it's a good idea there is no limit for the publication but if you publish a paper which can be referred by people from different area including medicine or anything you will get maximum benefit out of that paper right. another question is uh, publication normally we do it in blogs hmm. what is its impact blogs blogs we will write no blog blog writing yes correct blog writing cannot be counted as what is it will not nobody will pick up when you publish only in scopa syntax the system engine will search collect it with an up registering with your uh, or cid only you will get the benefit you okay. will get blocks or anything as i told you all metrics you will get all metrics but that will not help you much in future thank you right. uh good afternoon sir uh, sir my uh, concern is regarding the conflict of interest uh, you were talking about uh, interdepartmental research and uh, suppose i am collaborating with biomedical engineering people or i am con uh, collaborating with medicine people or surgery people then when we come to publishing of papers so a uh, few years back they were doing the appointments and they were cutting the marks if uh, it was not published in the our department journal like i am uh, doing it with uh, say biomedical people and it is published in some biomedical journal then it will not be considered for my promotions or my appointment and uh, even after that it was uh, slightly uh, they came down on that but then even at the university level what should uh, how it should be considered for our appraisal and uh, for our promotions when we are doing it with other departments so okay see your question is right a person who is stopping your promotion is ignorant they should look at the impact factor of the journal irrespective of the discipline for example we don't have good journal with the high impact factor more than four or five psychology we are publishing it with the health general health mental health or what we say that public health different field we publish it that what we say the journal impact factor is more important than the title of the discipline and the more you publish in inter interdisciplinary journal the more citations you can get it from different field you should encourage interdisciplinary research and interdisciplinary publications sir and uh, what about conflict of uh, conflict of interest when uh, so many authors are involved and uh, some people consider first author second author some people will consider also the corresponding author no. so we keep uh, manipulating this uh, you know we keep using this loophole for our uh, uh, considerations okay. see there is a question always see the first author is the person who put heart and soul for the research right first author then the second author you can give a corresponding author your research supervisor usually or the next person who has contributed you can give corresponding author then third fourth depending upon the amount of effort they have put for writing the papers collecting the data you have to arrange in the order and you have to give it in writing to the publisher also then you can the last person who has done the least work but you cannot avoid you can go even 10 to 20 or 30 or 40 for this that is allowed now if you see the papers published from korea japan china or you know what say that is different different social science field we can find that the number of co-authors are 20 30 because they draw 
experts from different different countries and those experts are having very high research profile they look at all the things for example if i have a collaborator for my publication from china that person has got what we say that uh, citation more than 15000 20000 or anything naturally i will get the benefit once if all his contacts the paper will get what is the publicity and citations will increase more so having the number of people is not an issue arranging the people should be made in this order but there are few journals they will allow you to keep corresponding order more than 1 2 3 if you have to check it i have seen it that one if they allow you if the people are contributing to you why not you give them second corresponding order 1 2 3 because corresponding order also will ha- get the equal weightage of the first order right there is no conflict no issue having more number of people because some study you cannot do it in gulbarga alone you may have to depend on people in bhubaneswar delhi mumbai or different countries right or you may have to involve some experts from the field of medicine or engineering then definitely you have to share your paper also with them with, the, with their name yes but then as you said sir when somebody is a seventh or eighth author huh. and if they want to use that paper huh. for their appraisal yes. then why it is usually not considered by most of the universities or something like that huh. that uh, they are also equally contributing to the weightage of the paper importance of the no, paper see, we okay. cannot put two people in the front seat of the bus okay there is only one seat for the bus only one person can sit on the chair right other person depending upon the and the person may get the benefit of citation x index i index all the benefits will come to the same person that's only benefit but when somebody is coming to me for job sitting in the interview he is the first is 20th order when i take the decision i will not give much weight to the person if a first order of the paper sit in front of me and the paper is good i will give more weight what is the weightage to this candidate no i okay so right coming see whether you are first author or third author or 20th author, author it doesn't matter see only we use this yardstick for the calculation of scores if the competitors are same same level say for example i have published 10 papers another author another person is also there he is also published 10 papers but he is in third author who will which who will give you the preference the administrators will give preference for the first author okay if i am third author i have 10 papers it is only for the calculation of marks we do like that it is 70% for the first author 70% for the corresponding author 70% for the guide supervisor or anybody and remaining 30% for all so if a paper uh, the marks is calculated based on the impact factor if more than 10 impact factor you will get 55 marks per paper so that paper is divided into 70% for the corresponding author 70% for the first author 70% for the supervisor 30% for the other rest whoever it might be it is only for calculation if i am applying for any other position other than teaching all authors are same irrespective of uh, the position where you are first third 10 15 it doesn't matter if you take any nature nature journal there are not less than 20 authors minimum per paper very rarely rarest of the rare we see single author paper in nature it is all 20 authors 15 authors more number of authors more is the value for your paper now this is the situation now at present see the publication also somebody asked the conflict of interest publication see i have published papers in geology journals nowadays i found that you know geology journals have become more expensive so i am publishing my paper in chemistry journals see some of my publications are from royal society of chemistry so they publish our papers because if our syllabus if your subject is same then we can publish even i can publish paper in psychology journals if my topic is somewhat related to that if i i can publish paper in biology journals medical journals also i can publish what is my specialization my specialization is geology okay if i can manage to you know correlate with some of the aspects i can publish there is no conflict of interest 
conflict of interest comes only when same paper, same type of publication is done by another person. Then only he will ask, same paper. See, one person has done something on one topic, same topic, another person has done same type of research. Like you have seen the discovery of genes and uh, this chromosomes and all, they claim many people, you know, Nobel Prize, Nobel laureate, they also claim that, you know, same, the publications are same, their research is same. So that is the situation. There is no conflict of interest. Only if the paper publication is same, then only conflict comes. Same. If somebody else claim that uh, work belongs to me, if you have done the work, then I can claim conflict of interest. Other than that, no, nothing. So that is the only aspect for calculation of marks, that too in assistant professor, associate professor level, we calculate marks. That also it doesn't, uh, you know, impact on your uh, assessment. Anything, you know, for uh, professor, we have certain score. Associate professor, we have certain score. For assistant professor, certain score. If you have, you have to satisfy that number. Only for that number, we calculate the marks. Good afternoon, sir. I am uh, assistant professor anatomy department. Sir, I can publish my paper in International Journal of Surgery. Yes, I do not know about the credibility of the paper. Yes, sir. The journal. If the journal is having the impact factor of 0 0.10, I would say you go ahead. Okay, 0.10. Thank you. 0.2 also good, 3 also, 0.5, 1 is also good, I don't know. First you check, right. No, but at least the journal should have some impact factor minimum. And all they will definitely have impact factor. No, 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 because we do not know the journal. I have no, no idea. Yeah, yeah. That journal, what you, you said, said, open access, you know, that uh, uh, other journals. Uh, See, for the calculation of ranking of universities and uh, NIRF, NAC, they only look for two things. One is Scopus, another one is Web of Science. Nothing else. If you publish paper in care list, they will not care. Uh, yes. But okay. again, you have to be also more what we say that uh, concerned about the, you know, it's not just getting published alone. You must also see the future visibility. And one more thing, right. you know, if you, uh, you know, for uh, this thing, uh, evaluation, the papers will come, oh. referring. Oh. If you, you know, at least refer two papers, hmm. the publication fee will be waived off. Yes. Many of the ah, journals, yes, in Scopus journal. Yes, if you can. Yeah. Right. Any other question? Copy, copy, paste from the Okay, shall we conclude? Thank you so much, sir, for helping us understand the art of research, writing, and publication. Now we'll have a short 15-minute tea break, and we'll assemble again at sharp 4.45 for the closing session. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now I request Honorable Vice Chancellor, sir, to please come on the dice. I request Sahir Ansari, sir, to please escort our VC, sir. I request Registrar, ma'am, Professor Uksar Fatima, ma'am, to please come on the dice. And I call upon Mr. Irfan to escort ma'am on the dice. As we are, as we are moving to the closing session, we had two wonderful sessions. For the first of it, I call upon our first resource person, Professor Ashwak Ahmed, sir, to please come on the dice. I also request Irfan to please escort, sir, on the dice. I request Sahir Ansari, sir, to escort Professor Romit John, sir, on the dice. Please, sir. It was very wonderful session from both of the resource person. 
Thank you, sir. Now I call upon Irfan to please take the dice. Thank you, sir. Now, I'd like to request Professor Ali Raza Musbi, sir, Honorable Vice Chancellor Kabin University, to address the gathering. Uh, very good. Uh, good, good uh, afternoon to all of you, Honorable Pro Chancellor, um, the experts, registrar, colleagues. I would like to thank uh, you, Honorable Pro Chancellor, for sparing time. I was very keen that he should come here today and uh, he should also speak to all of you. I would like to give him a brief as what we have done since the morning. Uh, this is the first step that we have taken towards uh, preparing for the NAC visits, wherein the two experts who have joined us, Professor Ashfaq and Professor Romed John, have each taken a two hours uh, training uh, to the, for the, all the faculty here about how we should collect and store data, information, on how we should improve our research profile. Uh, I think that this is the, a very first step, but I am sure that the faculty who has been here since 10.30 in the morning has now have a very clear idea of what is the next thing to be done. We have formed the IQAC, and very soon, in the next two or three months, we should have the baseline in place so that we can even think of making an application. Uh, there are a lot of strengths we have, but these are not properly organized, and these are not properly stored for uh, retrieval and uh, for, for us to be informed about them. Secondly, what we tried to achieve was that the faculty should have a sense of professional engagement with the university. The faculty should have a sense of not only, uh, not only that they are employees, but they are part of the institution. This will come when they start feeling that this institution is not only theirs, but they'll have to give it their best. There is a certain mismatch at times, or lack at times between the employer and the employee. I think that bridge has to be built and that bridge has to be very stably maintained. So we will also have to promise ourselves that we will be more professionally engaged and committed. This is in a very short way what we have done since the morning. And I'm glad that even though of your busy uh, this thing, reasons and schedule, I thank you since morning. I have been in touch for, the, for at least three times, requesting him again and again to be here, and I'm very happy and glad that he has accepted and he's here. I would now like to request him to please address all of us, because a lot of what has happened over the last few months in the university was because, as I said in the morning, of his active support and interest. And a uh, lot many things more are due to happen, and I believe that we have a, a, very, a very stable team which understands each other exactly. And that is the reason why we are able to move faster and not be bogged down in things which are not of use to us as of now. So with these words, I would like to request the Honorable Pro Chancellor to please address the audience here and please share uh, your thoughts on how you believe that this, that this university should grow and what are the steps which have been taken, which you are well aware of, and what are the possible outcomes that the administration expects as far as the employees are concerned. Please, sir. Nahmadu wa nasulli ala rasulil kareem. Respected Honorable Vice Chancellor Saab, Registrar, 
Professor Ashfaq Sahab and Professor John. Professor John, I'm sorry. Uh, respected staff of Haja Bandhanawa's University. Good, good evening to everyone. I'm not a very good speaker, but Vice Chancellor Sahab, I don't know, have somehow confidence in me that I talk and slightly motivate all of you. I am more of a skilled worker rather than an orator. Uh, I just want to say a few things which I mean when you think about Khaja Education Society being established in 1958 uh, by my late grandfather it was a very small setup at that point of time but that for that small setup although i was born pretty late but what i have heard and what i have experienced of his late years that how much he had worked hard to establish these institutions since more than 50, 60 years now. And then my father took over in 2007, although he was involved with him since many years. But the major change which came up was in 2018 when this whole bunch of institutions could actually become a university. It was shocking for me because I have studied in a very prestigious university in Canada, McGill University, and I had seen how it was run. What were the jobs of the professors? What were the job of the other non-teaching staff? And the students, and the setup, and the appearance. The major thing which I feel is the work atmosphere. Because once let it be whoever, either a, uh, a professor, a teaching staff, or a not teaching staff, or student, or whoever comes down to a campus, to a university, he should, he, she should feel privileged and happy when you enter the campus. That is the major change which we want here. That is what I have seen, because when you go to a very big university, I mean, just that feeling that you are connected to that university is a blessed feeling. That, oh, okay, I have studied in such a big university, or I am working in such a big university. But today, we are the ones, you, we, all of us, are the ones who can make this university big, as big as those universities. No one can do that except for us. And it is a total teamwork from an attender to the top management. If everyone knows what they have to do and what they have to do in the prescribed time, because if you compare this industry, this is education, though we don't have targets and everything because this is not commercial. But if you see it, compare it with today's commercial activity, you know, every 
position has its own target. For instance, if he is a if he's work, working in a bank, he has to make uh, make call today. Everyone gets calls from banks. There is a target that you have to reach to 100 people today. By hook or crook, he has to do that. It is not only to make yourself, I mean, happy that you have completed the work today, but also to a bigger institution to grow. And that is what you have to do. As employees, as employers, we have to make you happy, you have to make us happy. But that is not the only thing which we, are, which, which we want. I mean, just giving happiness to each other is not the goal. The goal is how you can make your institution, your organization, one of the biggest in India or in the state or in the world, however it could be. Now, my only wish to you is, I mean, I can only motivate you, my uh, colleague, uh, Professor Ali Razamo Sab has joined us recently in the last year, and he has immense ideas, and uh, he's working very hard to make this university one of the best. I know it is a very, uh, at, at a very, uh, I mean, early stage for this university, but we all are doing our jobs. We all are connected. The only thing I want from our staff, teaching or non-teaching, is to do their best. I mean, your one, if you think as a one person, if you complete your task for today, that is the only thing that could make this university bigger and better. Everyone should think that their job actually matters. Do not think that Aaj main ye nahi kiya to kuch farak hone wala nahi. Agar ye attitude hamare andar rahega, to then we cannot progress. We have to complete our task. And for me, I mean, obviously education is in a different sector, but for me, it is in the service industry. I see it is an, it in a service industry because you are catering to students because student comes with the hope that I will get the best of what I could because uh, that student age is very limited. I am very happy that I could go to McGill. I could never forget my days in McGill. Why? Because it was the best university. Now we all have a job to do. We all have to combine our efforts to make this university better. And that is what I request you all, that this NAC is one of the steps which is necessary because it, it shows us, it guides us, it's a, it's, it's kind of a, 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 what do you say, a mock drill ke jaisa hai. It's, it's kind of a mock drill. You do all these things, that means you are in habit of doing that. Now you, when you start doing it, it gets better and better every day. So that is what it is, I feel. I mean, you, I, correct me if I'm wrong. Ye sare accreditation ke jitne bhi, organizations, it's, it's only for the benefit of the institution that you should run this institution or this university at a certain quality, with a certain level of teaching, with a certain uh, reputation. This is what we want. I mean, I know Khaja Bandhanawa's university will definitely grow, and I know you all will definitely support and work hard for it, please take it very personally that you, each of you will be a part of this and each of your effort will definitely benefit the institution. And for, from our side, you are 
always welcome uh, for any problems or any uh, issues which you have. VC Saab is here and he takes care. He meets everyone and um, I am there, Chancellor is there. She, even Chancellor meets everyone. Uh, for a very small, small things also he prefers to meet because he wants everyone to be happy and to, uh, I mean, not create any problem and everyone, the work atmosphere, again, I come back to the work atmosphere. Once you are in a better work atmosphere, your own self will start working because the whole atmosphere is like that. You won't feel like sitting and not doing anything. If everyone's working, you feel like, a, you feel like to work as well. So I wish you all the best and uh, I, I try to uh, just say that NAC is a major part which will benefit the institution and you all should um, start uh, working on the guidelines, whatever you are getting today and later also I think uh, VC Sub will be here to guide you. We have our subject experts, experts who actually uh, have shown you, I think, since morning uh, and guided you on whatever requirement. Maybe again, probably they will come again and guide you again. So, uh, please pardon me if I have said something wrong. Uh, thank you so much. Salaam alaikum. Such motivation and encouraging words. Now, I'd like to request Professor Ali Raza Musvi, sir. Honorable Vice Chancellor Kabin University to please felicitate uh, Janab Sayyid Muhammad Al Husseini Sahib, Pro Chancellor Kabin University. Can we have a big round of applause, everyone? Thank you, sir. If you have any queries, any clarifications with the resource persons, Viewers would like to share their views on today's workshop is also welcome onto the stage. Any queries, any clarifications, or any views on the workshop? Anybody from the audience? Views on today's workshop? Yeah, you want to? Hello, everyone. Uh, myself, Dr. Namrata from the Department of Mass Communication and Journalism. I have done my PhD in 2019, where I have registered myself in 2012. Uh, even though I have done PhD and I have published 25 articles and presented almost 40 presentations, uh, still then, after attending this, these two sessions, I felt I was lagging in many of the areas which I was not knowing, and today I came to know about that. And uh, I would like to improve myself in all those areas which about which I came to know today. It was really very helpful for us, for me especially, and I would like to improve myself as far as many more aspects of research are concerned. My one of the books is also under process, and uh, I hope I will complete that one in the coming academic year. Thank you, thank you so much. I would like to thank KBN University for arranging such a good thing and wonderful thing for such budding assistant professors like us. Thank you, thank you, Anandu. Thank you so much, ma'am. Publication, whatever you publish, you please maintain some standard, like, uh, after listening to Ramit Jan's lecture, you please publish papers in journals which have impact factor. So even if it is 0 0.01, doesn't matter. But it should have impact factor. And also try to publish papers in Scopus Index Journal. None below that. You please publish papers because if, if you are unsuccessful in first attempt, you can go for the second attempt then you can go for the third attempt. You know, attempts are unlimited. You can go as many attempts as possible. Because first thing you submit paper may not be accepted. They may say this is not relevant, this is not suitable for publication. But you please set some standard first. 
you have to have large amount of data, good interpretation, with good illustration, any journal will accept. It doesn't matter if I am from one section, if I am publishing in another subject, it doesn't matter. Absolutely no, doesn't matter. You can publish in any journal that is relevant to the research work you have done. It doesn't mean because I am geology, I can publish paper only in geology, it is not like that. You can publish papers in, even in science, other journals, like for example, zoology, even psychology journals I can publish if the paper is relevant. It doesn't matter, but any promotions and all, if you have anything in your, in your mind, any doubts in your mind, please remove those doubts. It only, we only count on papers with impact factor. We don't see the subject. Okay, of course, for the submission of PhD, it is required because the student has to publish paper in the relevant topic. <coughs> relevant topic, but then also journal, you can publish in any journal. So you should set some benchmark. That is only thing I request you because none of the agencies like NIRF or NAC, none of them, they look for the publications other than Scopus and Web of Science. Only those two. We have seen many examples here, but our agencies, we look forward only for Scopus Index Journals. And we have seen Clarivate. If you want to clarify about impact factor, go for the Clarivate website and you check the Clarivate website. If anything, if any journal, even if it doesn't have impact factor, but it is listed in Clarivate, that is enough. You can publish in those journals. And like care list also is welcome. That is the last option. If there is nothing, no more options left to you, then you go for care list. Then also you please, you know, see that it is in some very good publisher, from very good publisher, like Springer or Tyler and Francis or anything. But please concentrate on Scopus Index Journal. You know, Scopus Index Journals consists of Elsevier, Tyler and Francis, Blackwell, Wiley, all those publishers it consists of. Please concentrate on that. Then only your research ability will improve, your quality will improve. And also you will be visible throughout. Whether it is open access or subscription, it doesn't matter. But your quality will definitely improve if you publish in these journals. That is what I wanted to say. Thank you. Any more queries or clarifications from the resource persons? Sir. Thank you everybody, Honorable Pro Chancellor, Vice Chancellor, Registrar Madam, two resource persons. Of course, uh, I am talking on behalf of my colleagues. It was a wonderful day today. Uh, I thought that this could have been earlier in the January or February because when we are going for NAC accreditation, there was a lot of learning for us today. I compliment all the, the resource persons, Dr. Ashfaq and Mr. John for giving a very valuable insight to us to what is to be done for getting good marks at NAC and also elevating the standards of the university. I share that at, as far as I know, I'm associated with medical college and there is no dearth of material as far as research and publications are concerned. What we lack is channelization through proper forums. We have what one professor, every professor having five, six publications every year in each department like surgery, medicine, because that is essential one for our promotions, NMC has put it. And secondly, for our concern, when we do interesting cases, paperwork, our volume is good. Others will publish five, six cases, but in KBN we publish 21, 30 cases per paper. So the volume, the quantum of the content of the papers are really very high. But today, because of Ashfaq and Mr. John, we know where to channelize our papers. I think I, all my colleagues will agree. Secondly, my request is to Vice Chancellor, sir, that let, we should capitalize on this workshop. You, you small committees to be made, uh, one for medical college, one for engineering college, one for art science college, so they can come weekly or monthly to each department, find out the pitfalls. We cannot come out here, but uh, hospital side, we are very busy. If they come there, each department, we will get a lot of support in channelizing our research papers and publications through proper formats. That will add to the value of the university. Only these two observations, and thank you very much. Now with this, oh, you have something? 
So, um, this is the first time I'm uh, started to shivering in a public speaking because all great people are there. And uh, my age is just uh, experience of them or less than that. Um, sir, uh, today about NAC, I do not have any uh, thing to say. But uh, in general about uh, this KVN, you have a little thing to share. So, just recently, six months before all I joined, not even a single day I went to sleep, what I am going to do in KBN, what I am doing in KBN. These are the questions keep on popping in me. And still now I am trying to find an answer, but I am unable to arrive at the answer. Uh, sir, yeah, we are doing great jobs, but uh, for our potential, the heights which we need to reach, it's very high. For instance, uh, we are educating humanity. It's a philosophical. From philosophical approach to, we need to go to scientific approach, which is necessary for this time. And second thing is that we need to have scientific approach. Why I'm saying is that for the five years, we know the COVID pandemic also occupied the three years. So we do not have proper record. We do not have proper stream of things. So make a mathematical calculation. What are the things which we didn't do the last four and a half years? We need to do in next six months which means that each and every faculty need to work five times better than a normal average faculty, which they need to work for a normal university. So what I'm trying to say is that uh, just uh, I was very much impressed by Vice Chancellor's speech on uh, our uh, 26th Jan, okay? So we all are thinking our university is just uh, a stone of something. Yes, I'm an outsider. I'm coming from Tamil Nadu. Some faculties are coming from Rajasthan. But one thing, KBNU is paying for us. The people of KBNU, people of Kalaburki is paying for that. So we need to be thankful to them. So getting paisa, going and sleeping is not important. What the philosophical view the founder had had, we need to implement it. What the vision he didn't complete till now, we need to complete it. Yeah, our institution grow in the form of expansion from north to south, east to west. But the thing is that whether that vision is achieved, whether the process, um, Dean is used to say, more than the process, product important. Yeah, she was right. Whether we achieved that product, that very, very important. Sir, for others, it's the NAC achievement seems to be a, just a formality. But what I think is that if we achieve A grade, all put together, that is going to be speak the hard work which started from 1958 to till now. What I request from the everyone is that, our visions can be achieved, any visions can be achieved, but each and every faculties keep on working for that. That is very, very missing. That is the saddest part. And something, sir, uh, from management side, you're uh, filling the bottle with uh, water. That means you're funding a lot, you're organizing so much of things, but there are a lot of holes in our uh, bottle. It is leaking. So we need to fix the hole. It's not about pumping the fund, it's not about pumping external faculties to come, lot of advice. Some leakages are there, that internal things alone can fix it. So therefore, what I'm trying to say is that it's not only, uh, most of the time, all experienced faculties were called for meeting and they were discussed among themselves. Uh, youngsters, uh, things are considered to be naive. Uh, sir, we are naive, we are young, but it doesn't mean that we do not have any wisdom. So it should be addressed. Uh, and a furthermore thing is that the leakage should be stopped. And third and most important thing is that we are going in the right direction. I have no question about the direction, but the speed which we are going is very, very small. Okay, the achievement height is very high, but the speed which we are doing is very, very opposite to that. We need to increase our speed, that's all, thanks. Thank you. Thank you, now I'd like to request Dr. CM, sir, uh, we'll proceed with the vote of thanks now. Thank you. I request Dr. Basir, sir, Professor in HOD, Department of Community Medicine and Director, IQAC Kevin University, to present the vote of thanks. Thank you, Dr. Irfan. Thank you very much. I hope everybody attended the session with full of your concentration and uh, it was a lot to learn. So, moving to word of thanks, I would like to thank first His Holiness Dr. Sayyid Shah Khusro Hussaini Sahib, His Excellency Chancellor Khaja Banda Nawaz University and President Khaja Education Society for his constant support for all the activities, events, whatever we do in the university. Next, I would also like to thank our young and dynamic Honorable Pro-Chancellor Sir, 
and vice president sir khaja education society who always help us and make the things go smoothly also i would thank dr sayed mustafa husseini sir who is not available here but he also makes us he also guide us so that the things always go smooth for the workshops a special thanks to professor ali raza muswi sir honorable vice chancellor sir kvn university for continuously supporting me and giving me this opportunity to conduct the preparatory workshop for the nag as we have to go long way in nag sir i shall always seek your guidance and your support in future also i also thank registrar ma'am professor ruksar fatima ma'am for her constant support lastly two resource person who came all the way one sir came from bangalore and also professor romit john sir who came from central university of karnataka ashfaq sir who came from kuvempu university they gave us full one day session sir your sessions were very helpful and in future we shall be very glad to take your advice lastly all the deans coordinators and staff for attending the workshop and making it grand success i shall fail in my duties lastly i would like to thank my organizing committee the stage the reception committee the catering committee and also all the students tutors who all helped me to organize this function thank you thank you one and all